Okay, so hi everybody. My name is Ruth Sofia, and uh, together with Rita, we would like to welcome you to the, the UIOT on Dr. Commons workshop uh, on ontological interoperability. So just doing a quick overview before we start, all of you have the agenda. Uh, so next slide, uh, please. So you have here some uh, housekeeping rules as, as usual, okay, common in webinars. Um, if you are not a speaker, please turn off your video. When, when speakers uh, present, then they turn, turn on the video. You can post questions via the regular questions and, uh, and answers in, in Zoom, so on the chat. And if you want to speak, so we have specific sessions, we'll see in a minute for questions and answers, please uh, raise your hand and the specific chair of the session will give you uh, the word. Uh, next slide, please. So you, as I said, you received the agenda, but I just want to point out a, a, a couple of things. So we have here basically two agendas and then some interaction uh, moments. So we start with a quick welcoming the, uh, by, so this quick welcoming, but afterwards with uh, uh, an IoT, UIoT and Auto Commons overview of the two cooperation and support actions. So we start first with Lamprini Kolovu from UIoT and then with Hedy Karay from uh, Onto Commons. And then after this, we have a first interaction session moderated by Rita. Next slide. Then afterwards, we continue with a session of, uh, of uh, talks where basically we have invited uh, uh, key experts in the context of that are working on ontological interoperability and on standardization. And so on this session, the talks will be sequential and then we have a period for questions and answers. We, we expect to do a break at 4.30 for five minutes. So after the questions and answers, next slide, please. And then we have again an interaction session too, moderated by Rita. And then we go to the panel, uh, uh, so with a few speakers. So during the panel, uh, the panel is also moderated by Rita. You have the opportunity to interact and to raise questions and to discuss and also to express your opinion. We expect to close uh, at 6 p.m., maximum 6.10. Um, just doing a, a, a short summary and uh, explaining your next steps. So I now give the floor to Lamprini to present UIoT. Thank you, Ruta. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to see you here. Um, I would like to just give you an overview of UIoT, which is our CSA. Can, can we have the slides or should yes. we share mine? Yes, just one second. I'm trying to find them. No worries. Uh, we are a CSA that runs um, something less than, than three years. This is our last year, uh, actually. And uh, we are uh, five partners that we are working uh, together. Uh, Twerk was bringing together, uh, you can go directly to the slide three, uh, Valentin, if you want. Yes. Thank you very much. So the main objectives of our uh, CSA is to actually to bring everybody together from the community of the agenda next generation internet uh, of things, not only the projects that are running under this initiative and under the umbrella of the European Commission, but all the key players and stakeholders that are in the domain. And uh, the main objective is to uh, open a sustainable and dynamic dialogue about, uh, around uh, different um, aspects and uh, themes on the NGIOT, um, activating this community and producing uh, relevant recommendations and strategic uh, research uh, as centers uh, for the future of, uh, of the domain. Next slide, please. Uh, of course, um, um, we are fostering also the, uh, the introduction and the framework of new business models for innovation and activities and also for the skills development. So we are also developing a training program or the basis for the training program that should, uh, that should, took in place, should be in place for the IoT skills that are expected for the future. And of course, uh, we are here to outreach and uh, support the impact creation and assessment of the uh, various initiatives that are organized around the community from us, from the projects under the NJOT, but also from the other initiatives as well. Um, the next slide, please. 
So the key directions in the, in the work is first of all, uh, the openness. And when we are talking about the openness, we're not talking only from the technical point of view, which means the open source, open data, open standards and open hardware, which is I, I expect more relevant to our webinar today, but also from, uh, from uh, as regards an open ecosystem, but also the uh, values that uh, uh, supports the open initiatives in the NGIOT and also the relevant and emerging technologies uh, domain. Of course, to do so, we are blading and involve the European communities, but at the, and then at the, the national level uh, as well, with all the key players and stakeholders coming from the different uh, initiatives, and we are trying to refine and uh, and place the base and the ground for a vision for the com computing continuum. Of course, in collaboration with the new initiatives and the new projects that are coming now uh, after the Horizon Europe calls were opened this uh, this year. Uh, next slide, please. So towards these other directions, our activities actually are or, or a broad uh, vein, starting from uh, setting the dialogue with uh, uh, through some coordination boards uh, with uh, initiatives and stakeholders in the NGIOT domain, and also producing the general the, the relevant roadmaps and frameworks for strategic recommendations for the future. But also we uh, we have lots of activities on community building and uh, putting together recommendations and research priorities in different domains like the standardization, pre-standardization, and open open source. Of course, as I said, one of our priorities is. Uh, the positioning for the IoT uh, as a driver in the, in the European uh, Union uh, domain. So we are collecting and we are promoting the best cases and uh, use practices. And uh, of course, we are focusing also for developing the IoT training program um, that set the basis, let's say, to support also new business models and new, uh, new development paths uh, in the domain. And, Finally, as I said, we are supporting the communication and dissemination part as well as the impact assessment. So what all this community, all this ecosystem brings to the community and what is the actual impact that we are bringing together. Um, this is more or less what you, we do in, in EUIoT. Of course, in the next slide, which is the final one, uh, uh, you can see our future work, which is actually what I said uh, more or less, but uh, we are very happy to be with you uh, here together and work on this and we are uh, waiting for for uh, your contribution and your collaboration in bringing everything uh, together, creating the roadmaps that we need for the future of uh, the NGIOT and the next calls also of the European Commission. And uh, we are very happy to work with you all. Um, thank you very much. And I wish that you enjoy your webinar today. Thank you. So we go to Hedy and now with an overview on onto Commons. Thank you, Ruti. So waiting for the slides, so let me introduce myself. So my name is Hedy Karai. I'm professor at the National Engineering School of Tal, a part of University of Toulouse in France. Uh, also, I'm the technical coordinator of Onto Commons project. So um, as we have short time, so I try to as quick as possible give a general idea about why Onto Commons and what we are doing within the project. So let's say that um, the spread of new web technologies um, has led to organizational transitions that are the root of the digital revolution. So this revolution has led to the fusion of the physical, social, and digital dimensions of our environments. And Industry 4.0 or digital manufacturing uh, are examples of booming uh, physical, social, cyber systems and Internet of Things. Uh, and in this context, a huge amount of data is generated. And uh, this data become the main asset of the company and it should be shared, monetized uh, to generate value for business. This is very important for business to, uh, to drive this data value chain. Uh, so for the next slide, I tried to summarize um, uh, to summarize this process. Uh, previous slide, please. So there is different manners to present data value chain process. So let's take the simplest one. So design it as four steps process, including generation, collection, analytics and exchange of data. And this process 
take advantage from the use and adoption of ICT trends and new paradigms, including IoT, cyber physical systems, big data, cloud computing, machine learning, and more explainable AI, uh, uh, semantic interoperability, and uh, the solutions mostly related uh, to uh, semantic web and knowledge graphs. So uh, what we can see that um, ontologies as uh, the formal science of what is, can has a role in those uh, different levels uh, of technologies. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, since 2000, a lot of initiatives have been launched to develop ontologies for industrial domains. But unfortunately, most of them fails to drive interoperability. Uh, and ontologies couldn't get traction and still, let's say, uh, uh, greeted with skepticism uh, in, in, in many circles. So this fail is due to, to several typical reasons uh, that we identified, but let's say some, let's summarize uh, uh, two facts. So the first one is that ontologies usually promoted as uh, a valuable solution for interoperability, but they are often not interoperable. The second fact uh, is that in different industrial circles also, ontology-based solutions are, are, are uh, uh, considered as a key building block for the data-driven innovation. But ontologies uh, are very complex to develop, time-consuming and costly. So in order to come with some answers and solutions to that, onto commons can. So next slide, please. So onto commons is, uh, a European funded project under the H2020 program, uh, running for three years uh, since November 2020, and including um, 19 partners from 10 European countries. Next slide, please. So, concerning the goals of the project, so uh, our goal is. Uh, and let's say the main one is to overcome interoperability bottlenecks and facilitating data sharing and valorization. So how we are dealing with that? So as a coordination and support action, uh, Onto Commons brings together and coordinate activities uh, of the most relevant European and international stakeholders in a win-win cooperation uh, in order to, uh, to develop a roadmap for uh, ontology-based interoperability for data documentation, but also to develop with the community what we call ontology commons ecosystem as a foundation for data documentation and data-driven innovation. Next slide, please. So I will, I will focus on this ontology common ecosystem that uh, will facilitate the development of domain ontologies uh, through a set of specifications and underlying top level ontology and a set of tools. So as I said, uh, I mean, one of the facts is that ontologies are complex. Time, uh, let's say, uh, need a lot of time and it it's costs a lot. So according to that, what we will provide in Onto Commons is this ecosystem to facilitate the development of domain ontologies uh, and also um, providing a set of tools in order to, uh, to make it easier for the end users uh, in order to develop, uh, 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 let's say, their data documentation from simple metadata schema to uh, a more complex integration with uh, RDF databases and so on. So uh, the OCHES uh, will enable user to adopt ontologies easier for their data documentation. So facilitating their data management under fair principles and uh, especially uh, basing all those development and drive them 
uh, uh, through uh, ontology standardization. Next slide, please. So as you can see here, so the Onto Commons ecosystem will consist of a hierarchy of network and ontologies of different levels of generality from top level ontologies to the application level. So for that, uh, uh, we will develop uh, multiple forms of interoperability uh, of ontologies under uh, uh, top level uh, and mid level ontologies. And uh, also will provide a set of tools and methodologies covering, let's say, uh, the full range of uh, ontology engineering uh, activities uh, from development to reasoning, database integration, and so on. And also will provide a set of specifications for ontology that will provide full compatibility between tools and ontologies. And uh, in that, we adopt a pluralistic approach uh, that allow to adopt different top level ontologies and to harmonize different ontologies from different domains. So with that, I will, I will stop my presentation on Onto Commons and later we'll, we'll discuss and uh, even for other presentations, you will have more details on Onto Commons. So I hope that you will enjoy this, this workshop and uh, have uh, insightful uh, uh, discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Hadi Lamprini, for these very interesting presentations. Um, and uh, now, actually, uh, I would like also to remark what Hadi uh, just said right now, that uh, we really hope that uh, you can learn a lot of things uh, during these three hours workshop today. And um, as, you also said, as you also saw, we have actually some presentations, but also some parts in which you can give your own contribution, like the session that we're going to have now um actually uh, also to test a little bit how much you know in terms of uh, semantic interoperability we would like to do a small game a quiz with all of you uh, with a tool that is called the Mintimeter. Uh, right now in the chat I will share with you all a link and please feel free uh, to log in there and in the meantime, I will also share my screen so you can see exactly the kind the questions that uh, we're going to address you. In case you have difficulties in uh, uh, seeing, uh, let's say, in, a, in accessing Mentimeter from the link that I have shared with you, no, I, I see that actually we will be good. Uh, another way for accessing it will be to go on Mentimeter.com and then include the code 15879025. Okay, and then uh, if it is actually the first time that you're using Mentimeter, uh, actually the more a word is used, the bigger it becomes. So for example, I see that we have quite a lot of experts, quite a lot of people that know about ontology, which is really great given the, the topic of our meeting and also knowledge engineering, which sounds good. Okay, we have also some PhD students and we really hope that today you can really learn something more uh, in this topic. Uh, then we have also IoT, manufacturing, digital transformation, supply chain, uh, data mesh as well, perfect. <laughs> so thank you really for uh, starting this game. Okay, I see that more, more comments are coming, but more or less the biggest uh, input is actually, I mean, today uh, will come from people that are expert in knowledge engineering, which is really great. Now, I will ask you another question that uh, here is that we would like to know um, what are the ontologies and standards that you are currently using in case you do. And if you do in particular, can you please tell us what is the domain uh, that <laughs> in, in, in which you are using them? Okay, so we have some contribution from Saref. Okay, and most probably uh, the person that has included this comment is most probably working in the IoT manufacturing domain. Uh, then, okay, we have also some contribution in manufacturing, supply chain, maintenance. Okay, so more or less we have the industrial world. The energy, which is good, because actually uh, today we are also going to have some presentations about the energy sector, which is good. Uh, then we also have, okay, SARF again, IUF core, manufacturing. We, we have a lot of experts. We have a lot of people that use SARF, I see. 
also the financial industry. Okay, Diobo, perfect. Others in energy, biomedicine. Okay, also the standards for hardware. Okay, thank you all for uh, letting us know uh, more about your background. Okay, more are coming. So IOF process planning, good. IOF core financial schema.arc. Okay. Okay, <laughs> it, it, it is great. I mean, the more contributions are coming. Uh, I will move to another slide now. And now instead, it, it is a little bit more difficult compared to the other questions that we have asked you, because in this case, we want to know if you're actually facing some issues in applying ontologies and standards in your domain of expertise. And also in this case, if you can also tell us what is your domain of expertise, it would be helpful for us. So, okay, the, the first challenge is the fragmentation, yeah, because there are, this is also linked to, let's say, an interoperability uh, problem. Also, you have most probably a lot of information that are not harmonized. Uh, also, knowledge alignment, the expressivity. Uh, then here we have other problems linked to the incompatibility of upper ontologies different abstract levels. Yeah, ontology is also into proprietary solution. This can be also a big problem, actually. Um, I'm just reading some of them, sorry, because there are so many contributions, but actually all the inputs that you're giving us will be very relevant because then uh, it will also help us to understand what are the gaps, I mean, the problems that you're facing that then we can potentially also address in the, uh, in the work that we're doing uh, in our project. Uh, okay, then we see that we have also a problem about that there are no standards. And I'm just curious to know what is the domain uh, linked to this? Uh, because I mean, most probably are you uh, not sure if the person that uh, made this comment uh, can add later on something, uh, because it would be actually interesting to understand what is the domain in which you actually lack standards. Uh, there are no tools. Uh, okay, the ontology will commitment. Okay, so more or less I see that quite a lot of people also face problems either in not finding standards, for example, or not having the right one to, to apply in your context. And then we have also problem about interoperability and also lacking of tools in general. Uh, then there would be actually other two questions and then we will go <laughs> to, to the next session. Uh, here, actually th th this, this is very strictly connected to the question that we asked you before, because here we would like to know if you see the need of creating new standards in your domain of expertise. And most probably given the replies that we got before that uh, in some domains you're lack lacking standards, most probably the reply to this question will be yes. Um, also, in, the ca in this case, I will really um, ask you to, uh, not sure if you can still see my screen properly. I will try to reload the page because I see that no inputs were coming. Okay, I hope that now you can all uh, continue contributing. Okay, perfect. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, so the problem, okay, in general, it is about data interoperability. In artificial intelligence, you, people find the need of having new standards, which is interesting. Uh, okay, other people says, uh, say that for them, they are fine with the, the one. Uh, then we need to ontologize standards. Another comment, interesting. Then in terms of data governance, digital twin, quantum computing, also, there is a need also for a digital product passport. And okay, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, okay, and then I mean, also, th th there is also, let's say, a point about the uh, standards and also how to interact with the SDO. Uh, actually, we, we can also expand this topic in the next couple of hours during also our panel discussion in circular economy. Uh, yeah, th th they are. We, we do not have a lot in, in this field uh, in digital humanities. Okay, and also fear. Good, thank you. Uh, last question. This will be act you actually here, you have to uh, press a number, the one that you prefer. Uh, because here instead, 
we would like to know um, how do you perceive the role of open source initiatives in increasing ontological interoperability? And you can give a, a number, let's say from one to five. Okay, most probably we will get all five now as a, uh, let's say as a reply. Yeah, so the, the main, uh, let's say, um, okay, then we also got a three even though the, the majority of people really see uh, that it is important uh, to actually work with open source initiative for the ontological interoperability uh, field. Uh, so thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, this was the end of this interactive session. And uh, then I will give the floor back to Ruta. Then instead, we'll moderate the first session that will be about uh, different real examples on ontological interoperability. Over to you, Ruta. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rita. So now we have, as Rita explained, a series of talks. So from different experts and different perspectives or, and challenges and key priorities on ontological interoperability. So we start with uh, Arco Paul Sankar uh, giving a talk uh, on Stand ICT and Auto Commons, and then we'll continue with Ray Walsh, who will uh, also focus on uh, the Auto Commons work and uh, 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 so key priorities currently being addressed. Um, Arco Paul, do you want me to do the quick intro to STEM ICT first? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next slide, please. I, my name is Ray Watson, I'm the director of the EU um, Observatory for ICT Standards. And just introducing quickly, just the first few minutes, uh, the, uh, the STEM ICT project, which is a Rise in 2020 funded project from the European Commission. And um, it has a number of uh, three main I, I suppose facets to it. One is that we're a funding platform. In other words, we support EU experts in engaging in European international standardization through open calls, where we could give grants back to the applicants, the ones that are successful. Um, and we have a grants platform that we do that uh, facility through with an independent expert panel of evaluators. We uh, organize third party events, um, sorry, we get involved in third party events and organize webinars and, and seminars, et cetera. The European Observatory itself then is for hosting standards. It's, it's made up of, of um, uh, 11 technical working groups of which Arco Paul is going to give a talk in a few seconds about the uh, um, Under Commons technical working group. Uh, and these technical working groups produce landscape reports for the European Commission. And we have four published to date in AI Smart Cities, Trusted Information, Digital Twins, very large community of experts that are involved. Uh, we have over 100 um, senior uh, standards experts engaged on a weekly basis working with detective working groups uh, producing these reports um, that we're talking about. Next slide, please, Ruth. Uh, so the and, and uh, as part of the open calls, then we do analysis just to see what well, where are the, the main areas of interest from the from the fellows that get funded. So this is a synopsis of, of the open calls one to six, and you can see the number of, of grants that were, were awarded by grant type and to which organization and the split between uh, gender and uh, male to female. But the highlights there, as you can see, that the most targeted topics really are cybersecurity, AI, blockchain, uh, 5G, quantum technologies, and the ones that you would expect to be high in the priority of emerging technology standardization within the European Commission at the moment. And the SDOs then that, that are, are supported through those uh, grants to the fellows are seen in the, uh, the bar graph there where you can see that ISO IC, it, in other words, the joint technical committee between ISO and IC is the big winner then followed by ISO. Uh, probably ISO by itself, it's strange to see that standing out by itself, but that's because uh, because blockchain was actually one of the, the um, uh, technologies that was that was very popular, and that's the TC307 as an ISO committee uh, by itself. And then Etsy and Sensen, like the ESO, as you can see that they are, they are uh, equally funded as well, so they're high on the agenda, but you can see there's a, a, a cascading um, list of, of SDOs that are supported through uh, Static City. Next slide, please. Okay, so and the last roll and call then uh, on the sixth one, currently the seventh, which is just finished uh, the yesterday actually, um, you can see that the uh, targeting was was towards looking at areas that are interested in the rolling plan. So we had a call for key enablers for for, for uh, security, uh, societal challenges, innovation, competition, single markets, sustainable growth, etc. And you can see the the subsections that were that under which the calls came in there. Uh, and you can see that the uh, the the key enablers and security, like you know, for uh, the, the uh, the rolling plan were, was part of or would have been a bigger part, like because most of the emerging technologies come in there. Uh, next slide, please. 
these are just a quick snapshot of the the, the landscape reports that have been published just ai you know, smart cities uh, the trust information and digital twin you can see that they're very uh, well uh, popular in terms of it being used as a resource, lots of downloads across each of them, including a digital twin like was only published a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. And the, the, uh, the technical work groups that are, that are in existence, um, uh, four of, of those which you can see that are, are published already, but you also have trusted the digital group. needs them from that from uh, uh, the organizers can uh, uh, can have access to them later next slide please I'm hearing hiccups only is that rude <laughs> um no, hopefully that's you're the only one um we have landscape so this is the landscape uh, um, upcoming landscape reports which include anthologies which Arco is going to talk about Arco Paul, and the uh, cloud and iot um, uh, edge and iot standards which are going to be um, separate reports as well next slide please so they're in the pipeline the open call impact reports are also produced so for each of the fellows that we fund and we've uh, obviously we've funded a lot of fellows at 217th date each of those will, will contribute to a report um so we give a group together the fellows by by each individual open call and we've published uh, three of the impact reports of the start of the third open call so we still have the fourth fifth and sixth to, uh, to publish which will show the areas of expertise that they're working in and the contributions they are making so they're they're actually work we worth reading as well if you're interested in and in looking at the uh, state of the art and standardization okay next slide please Standards Academy, just briefly mention it as part of the standard ICT uh, work. We also uh, collate and uh, we, we, we aggregate, I suppose, uh, and collect uh, standards training material from, from various sources, Etsy and Zenelec, and from various national bodies, and we make, make it available through the US website. We, we um, uh, so we annotate it to a certain extent by saying whether it's a beginner's material, intermediate material, uh, or advanced material, and we make it available uh, freely through, through the website for people who are interested in getting more information about standardization education. Um, and there, we're currently extending that as well. The chair of the, tech, uh, the academy, uh, who's the JTC1 liaison to the European Commission, uh, Brian McAuliffe, is, is continuously upgrading the, the content and we're now make it, making it possible for academy members to edit the catalog and develop um, the, uh, content and improve the quality of the the um, uh, the academy collateral that we we have uh, uh, um, accrued to date. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, just for next year, we have uh, we've arranged a, um, a a collaboration with EURAS, the European Association for Standardization. Um, I'm a vice president for EURAS, and we're going to do a collaboration between Stand ICT with EURAS and the HS Booster um uh, csa is to to produce a a greater showcase of, of standardization um academic work and uh, industry work is so to expand it away from a purely academic event and, and make it make it more um industry and research focused next slide please so the seventh open call was just closed as of yesterday um and it, these are, as I said, these are rolling calls. So every every couple of weeks, like once soon as one has, has closed down uh, within a short period of time, another one opens up. So for people who are interested in, in getting engaged in standardization, you can always apply uh, to Standard City in the next open call uh, with, with your with your proposals. And uh, if they're in the key priority areas of the digital single market and the European Commission, Commission at that point in time, you have a good chance, good chance of, of getting funded. Um, next slide, I think coming to the end now. So a lot of information there, yeah, that's it. I'll just hand it over to Arco Paul. So this, that's an overview of Stanley City. You can read through the, the detail uh, at your leisure and then Arco Paul will give a, a, a talk specifically on the ontologies, um, technical working group of which uh, of which Arco Paul is the, uh, the chair. Do I just give a, a sort of an overview of, of the, how you, uh, uh, how the technical working group for, for um, ontologies is put together and the, the, the way they go about their work then? The first slide I mean, was a segue to this presentation. Uh, 
so I won't spend much time. So we are in the TWG for ontology, which is working on, on, the, on the landscape of ontology in ICT. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, yes, so we started in March in 2022 this year, and we have 19 members so far, and, and they are from, uh, from the major ontology and development effort. Um, and uh, so what is our, our priority in our uh, uh, landscape surveys that we first look into the, the, the ontologies which has been published by the standard organization, um, uh, for example, let's see ISO and et cetera. But then we do not want to stop there because we want to see it as like, not for the ontology as a, as a, as say another standard for the ICT, but then ontology itself a tool for the ICT. So any type of ontology we believe is a good member of this survey. So we also do uh, search for the, for the ontologies which have been developed uh, from different projects and also different academic groups. We do not consider the non-owl ontologies which are uh, mostly um, a vocabulary for different uh, topics. And our sources are, of course, this uh, standard organization, but we look into the portals, for example, bio portal, agro portal, and industry portal. And then also we look into the existing state of the art. Uh, uh, large state of the art has been published by Onto Commons and also AIT, AIOTI. And also we have the members' knowledge who contribute a lot in this survey. So where we are so far, next slide please, we actually have almost 130 ontology already curated. And you can see a, a snapshot of them as, and, and uh, uh, how many ontologies are from different uh, standards. The, mostly the topics what we can see so far are from sensor, web of things, robotics, IoT is mostly covered. There are almost 25 ontologies. And then also there are telecommunications, smart cities, multimedia, blockchain, et cetera. We are covering domain of biomedical industry, material science, of course, manufacturing is included in the industry. Also looking into some of this uh, I mean, other domain like say agriculture and then um, biology related ontologies. So this is where we are so far in the um, uh, standard city uh, survey. Hopefully we'll be completing within a uh, couple of months. But then I want to talk about a little, little bit more on the, this uh, ontology switch we are trying to uh, uh, see as a standard, but if you, if you please go to the next slide. Uh, but then we have to understand that uh, whether ontologies are seen as a standard uh, in the normal way, how it is different from the, from the view that if we can, if we want to see the standards as ontology. So of course, as you know, that ontologies are uh, some kind of standardized data model, which will help you in sharing and integrating data among the stakeholders of a certain domain. But then uh, and this is not sufficient. In the future, I believe that ontology need to be seen as the pillar of codifying the entire scientific engineering and socio-political knowledge and activities. In that view, then you can, uh, you can think about how to publish standard in terms of ontology itself or say all the models and services in the IoT, uh, how can you publish them as ontology rather than using ontology as an ad hoc tool for uh, exchanging data. But to do that, we what we need to do is that we need to break the silo of the domain. So we need to bring the ontologies together. So we need a cross domain, cross discipline and cross sectoral interoperability between ontologies because as I have heard it many times that uh, ontologies, uh, of course, help in interoperability, but ontologies are not themselves interoperable. And next slide, please. Um, 
so to do that, I think the onto commons is actually in that path. So what we are trying to propose, as Hedy mentioned, that it is a collection of this aligned core uh, ontologies from different level of generality. But then at the same time, it has all the methodology and tools which can standardize the development and integration of ontology. There are many things involved in there, but then I won't take much time. Maybe in the discussion, we can talk about how onto commons can help in um, making ontologies integrate. Okay, next slide, please. And that is the last one, but this is some kind of like a, a practical outcome of onto commons that we have set up this industry portal where uh, we want to store the ontologies and version them, but at the same time need to provide the mapping between them. So the so there are not uh, different ontologies, but we can we can do some crosswalk between these ontologies. And also these ontologies can be, can be evaluated in terms of say fair score and, and, and then the user of the ontology and the domain uh, practitioner can find the right ontology for their need. Thank you so much. This is all from my side. Thank you, Marco Paul. Uh, okay, so we continue now with myself. So I will give uh, a quick overview on your IoT and on the work that we are doing so that you understand better the, the relation to semantic interoperability. Okay, so let's start by the next slide, Valentin, please. Uh, so basically, Lamprini has already presented you the cooperation and support action UIoT. And in terms of standardization and open source, there's a work package, uh, work package three, uh, led by us, Fortis, where we work towards recommendations or so research recommendations to standardization, pre standardization. Next slide, please. Assisting the projects. Uh, that are within the context of next generation IoT. So this is ICT56, uh, the ICT56 program. And, uh, but basically in a nutshell, so the goals that, that we have in terms of, uh, of uh, standardization are these strategic recommendations. So on these strategic recommendations are of course uh, developed by us together with uh, a broader community. So the next generation NGIoT community and uh, with a pool of experts across Europe and the USA. Next slide, please. So in this slide, you have uh, a representation of the ecosystem that we work with in terms of standardization, pre-standardization, but also, uh, so across different domains, but also uh, consortia. So this means that of course we are not just looking into, into standardization, but on the IoT landscape, which is quite fragmented, we try to address also key players, for instance, in the automotive sector or in the energy sector, which go beyond the regular pre-standardization and standardization entities. Next slide, please. So in terms of UIoT, instead of focusing on a vertical domain, what we focus upon is on scope areas that relate with an end-to-end -end IoT system that goes from the interfaces until data spaces, as you have in this picture, uh, considering a split between uh, what is today addressed as far edge or deep edge and near edge, and covering aspects such as infrastructure, so telecommunications and data spaces. And in terms of the, the so the, the project goals I already explained, but we also have a few tools that we hope can as facilitate uh, the exploration of topics cross domain. Next slide, please. So in order for you to also understand what we mean by near edge and far edge, you have here a representation of the different scopes, UIoT scope areas, where we map standardization entities and also map uh, contributions provided by different projects. Uh, so human IoT interfaces cover different aspects related with the user and, and the real world. And then far edge to us, there is, so we have developed a white paper on this, represents the equipment that is close to the end user, for instance, IoT gateways, also personal, personal devices, end user devices, field level devices. And the near edge is basically the infrastructure that is covered and controlled by an operator. 
uh, data spaces, I think it's clear to everybody, but basically, uh, so this, you have an articulation, okay, that is that separate, so it's, it relates with the data, processing and handling and storage, and of course, privacy preservation and trustworthiness. Next slide, please. So one of the tools that we have developed, if you go to the NGIOT uh, uh, site, is a catalog or let's say a map that collected uh, so different entities uh, in terms of standardization across multiple domains. So we hope that this can help or facilitate, together with other tools that already exist, uh, a mapping from projects between specific knowledge areas where projects want to focus on standardization. And we have also developed a few recommendations of last year uh, for a better alignment of knowledge areas to standardized development organizations. And we expect to also uh, develop uh, further research recommendations between September and March uh, next year. Next slide, please. So for instance, an example that is provided here is, uh, so there is this deliverable, this RE7, where we have analyzed the different uh, projects uh, working on IoT, so ICT56, and we analyzed uh, input provided by the projects on concrete topics and use cases defined. So for instance, here we see up uh, the scope, intelligent offloading, or neuromorphic computing, or distributed AI, and we have then developed a series of recommendations on how to best uh, provide so apply mapping to existing efforts in standardization or pre-standardization. Um, next slide please. So we see for instance that here in terms of edge semantic orchestration uh, what the projects are working upon is on data spaces for instance uh, 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 so there is already a focus in terms of or looking into BDBA Dairo, for instance, but still uh, there is the need or there is a possibility to take advantage of, of the work being developed and to provide uh, input, so, so input that, that can benefit both projects and the overall community. And if you check in this context, we don't see uh, topics related with ontological interoperability, which is actually a key aspect in, in, in particular in some domains such as manufacturing. Next slide, please. So we also analyzed uh, the, the, so where are the contributions from the different projects? For instance, if you see on, on this graph, what we see is that the projects are actually contributing in terms of technologies, so software and also use cases across the different UIoT scope areas in a very balanced way. Uh, with going more for the far edge and also for human interfaces, where again, we will have a bigger need to, because we need semantic interoperability, so we will have a bigger need to have cross-domain uh, ontological interoperability. Next slide, please. Similarly, in terms of, uh, of vertical domains, uh, we can see also that the projects, uh, the, the next generation IoT projects are focusing, so we have different use cases, but are focusing more on logistics, manufacturing, and then healthcare also, transportation, where there is a big fragmentation of ontologies. So, and, and the need to, 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 to have a better, a, a better repository. Next slide, please. So we have also analyzed then uh, in terms of uh, knowledge areas, where can the projects uh, provide or how can this be mapped to, uh, to standard development organization. And as you see here, we consider standard development organization, not just as standards or entities that truly develop standards, such as ISO or IEEE, but pre-standardization and also consortia. So as said, in, in specific domains, there is a need to ensure that uh, uh, work and recommendations towards specific consortia, yeah, so for instance in robotics, BDMA or industry uh, for zero, are, are developed so that uh, we can also assist in reducing the fragmentation. Next slide, please. So this is my last slide here. You, I provide you with uh, another type of mapping between these knowledge areas where in yellow you have, uh, let's say, so you have uh, areas which are not yet covered by the projects. So we analyzed where is the knowledge going. In gray are areas that don't really belong to the program of the IoT Edge uh, 
projects. And in blue are the, uh, let's say, the areas covered already by the project. So for instance, if uh, we look into cybersecurity, we see that most projects are focusing in, definitely in cybersecurity and, 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 and providing good contributions there with specific focus on data spaces, but not on across all the other scope areas, for instance, near edge or far edge, or even interfaces where this is a much uh, required aspect. So I leave you with this slide and I thank you for your attention. And I pass the token now to Laura Danielle, who here is representing, so from TNO, but who is representing the IoT Working Group on Standardization, IoT Working Group on Standardization, with specific focus on semantic interoperability. Thank you very much, Ruta. So welcome, uh, everybody, and thanks for having me uh, today. So indeed, uh, well, I work for TNO as a senior scientist on, on uh, ontology engineering mainly, uh, but uh, I'm also the, the co-chair of this group in IoTI, uh, which is part of working group three on standardization, which is one of the biggest horizontal groups in, in IoTI. And uh, there is this subgroup there, which is the semantic interoperability group. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, I can tell you just a little bit about this, uh, this group. So as I mentioned, part of this working group three, and I think that the, the need for semantic interoperability also after all the presentations that, uh, that have been done before me, uh, it's clear. Uh, and the yeah, problem is it's still something difficult. So there is an understanding perception that semantics ontologies can help uh, the interoperability, but still it is something difficult, uh, very perceived as academic difficult to find for industrial practitioners. It's something more for experts. Uh, uh, people don't, 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 don't really feel uh, able and even willing to learn this type of technology somehow. Uh, so our group uh, is a group of experts, uh, which comes both from standardization and research. And the idea is to try to lower this barrier for implementing semantic systems to, to, to go to bridge this gap to help as much as possible. And somehow we have uh, well, uh, regular bi weekly calls uh, uh, together. Uh, but uh, so if you're interested, by the way, to join, you can contact myself uh, or Martin Bauer from NEC. I put the, 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 the email address uh, later in the last slide. Um, if we go with the next one, we do some, some activities, uh, nice activities, and every year we see together what's more, uh, what, has, what it becomes more interesting and more relevant. And in the past, we have done a few white papers. Uh, so you see also that something belongs to the very first activity, 2016. Then we had some more papers in uh, 2000, uh, 2019. And uh, it's, uh, well, you can go and see these papers. We did some semantic tutorial, for example, last year in, in the IoT week. Uh, there are some slides there. If we go to the next uh, slide, you will see that, uh, well, then we have been active this year as well in the IoT week. So we, we are basically every year there organizing something because it's, it's part of our, our community. So we are, we are always present there. Uh, you see this ontology landscape. I will spend a few words uh, later in the next slides, but then we also have another activity. If you look at uh, the last one, a gap analysis, semantic interoperability in practice. You have a link to just an ongoing document, which is uh, a very beginning with some thoughts about, about this. But uh, it's really about uh, how to, to bridge the, the, the gap, what's missing, uh, for example, to support uh, and, and all these things. Now, a few words uh, about about this ontology landscape. So it's not the first one in the sense that, well, we, we have heard that there are other initiatives in this, uh, in auto commons and the ICT. Uh, maybe uh, what I need to specify here is what's the scope of this AI UTI ontology landscape, which is not just it's not to, to, to collect all the possible ontologies that are in there. It's actually to give a tool. Uh, the question came from the from the members and the stakeholders uh, in, in AI UTI asking, okay, uh, we are industry, we need to understand uh, what well, we want to use ontologies, we understand, but but which one should we use? If we go out there, we don't know which one to choose. We don't know which one will be there later. So where should we invest? Because it's a new technology, something that, that we need to invest some time. So that's why we started with this ontology landscape. 
And by the way, on the other hand, if you think that there are a lot of ontology de developers doing their ontology, it's also a way for them to give visibility to their ontologies, of course, and uh, find uh, basically you, you, you can have a suitable uh, match uh, for well, a promotion uh, for, for who is developing ontology and find a suitable match for who is looking for ontologies. It's about IoT, so of course, then we are already restricting somehow the, the, the domain, but IoT, so in the sense that it can be horizontal or vertical domains, different sectors, different, what I, how we call it before, energy, home, buildings, and so forth. It classifies the ontologies, but uh, the way we do it is uh, uh, also taking into account sustainability, so who is maintaining it, and what's the technology readiness level. So it should be something mature enough we start from TRL uh, level four, uh, considering the ontology in our landscape, and then uh, we, we give different colors. If we go to the next slide, it's probably even more clear how this landscape uh, works. So at the moment, we have 30, actually we have 37, if I'm <laughs> really precise, in the different domains. Why we have chosen these domains? Because there is another ALTI landscape, which is about standardization. It's a famous one that, that was done already years, uh, years ago. And uh, these are more or less the same, um, the same domains. That's why we divide in, in, in this way. And then you see also the horizontal layer that is applicable to all IoT domains. And you see there's some domains have more, some domains have, have less. What, what you see there is that you see colors. So colors correspond to uh, different, uh, so uh, to the question who is maintaining, so the sustainability, uh, because, uh, uh, for example, uh, you will see the uh, red, uh, the, 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 the green one are maintained by standardization bodies, the yellow one are still maintained, but then there is one single person there, uh, then you can have something that has a group of people, even if it's not standardization, so we give an idea in this sense. And uh, uh, the other one you see different shades so uh, different something is it is really dark green something is is, is not and this is uh, reflecting the maturity level that i mentioned before so if we go to the next slide maybe it becomes more clear uh, this this convention that we are using yeah you see here so uh, the TRL level goes from four till nine because we said okay we start at least from TRL level because if it's something that that industry and, and people and members stakeholders want to use it should be something uh, mature enough at least to, to be used and then you see the yellow is there is a single maintainer or a project behind this then level two there is an organization or level three we are in a group of organizations or so start to be an ecosystem and level for is a standardization body. There is no really judgment about which 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 is better or not. It's what one feels more uh, comfortable actually at the end. The important is that it, it's clear. It's some information that we're giving explicitly, and then one can make an informed choice in the moment is going to, to choose uh, uh, an ontology. If we go to the next slide. Uh, so uh, uh, in this report, it's, it's a short document somehow, but this is what you see. So there is a summary per ontology. Uh, of course, here is an example we have chosen Charles. Uh, but uh, you see this. So uh, there are uh, links to the uh, technical specification, if anything. Uh, there is the name, the URI where you can find the ontology, uh, the license, who is the maintainer, uh, short description, because at least uh, the first uh, look, uh, somebody can can even inspect uh, and, and, and see what's, uh, what's in there. And important is that where you see the complete survey information, there is a link that brings you to actually the full description of the ontology. So this uh, that you see here on the left is just a short version really for a quick, uh, quick view, but then you have the detailed information because there was a survey that we asked people to, uh, to, to, to com compile and there you find much more information if you're interested in one specific ontology. If you go to the next slide, uh, then uh, this is a first release, so we released this in, in uh, the end of uh, December 2021, so it's quite recent, but it's a live document. It's, it's clear that there are more ontologies and, and that 
yeah, this can be more complete, obviously. So, uh, of course, here you also find uh, uh, a link because we don't feel it for the others. I mean, we, we, we motivate and push people to, to give us the information, but we cannot, uh, it, we ask the creators, the maintainers who are in charge of these ontologies to fill this survey because otherwise the information well, it, it, it's, it's not it's not complete and we are not in, in the right place to fill this for, for others. So in case there are more ontologies that we missed or you're aware, uh, please here you find the link. So it's a little bit of promotion in this sense that would help. Uh, if we go to the next slide, now, uh, actually, the question was, well, I still have a few minutes, so I hope I can go quickly through this, because I think it was uh, uh, an input for, for the discussion. We were asking what, what were the challenges? Well, first, uh, if we look at this ontology landscape in general, it's difficult to engage uh, people because we are asking to fill in a survey and then well, people don't react unless you really push, push. Well, nobody has time at the end. So it's not a long survey, but still it takes uh, some some minutes, 10, 15, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. To, to be filled in. So, uh, expectation is that now that we have published the first release, probably next one will be easier because well, it's also easy to spot, not to spot your ontology if you have um, uh, developed one. So, then it's, a, it's an extra motivation probably now for people to say, I don't see it. So, so let's, let's see if it gets better for the next uh, release. Um, a second challenge, if we go to the next slide, is completeness. I mean, uh, you see the certain domains, well, it's, it's pretty clear already that certain domains have more ontology than certain have less. Why? Well, it could be several reasons, not many ontologies in these domains. Probably we were also not able to reach out to, to their creators, so probably there are, but we couldn't uh, yet reach out. Or sometimes, uh, uh, well, what are these ontologies that we're talking about? Actually, we are restricting to RDF our ontologies and vocabularies, but we are don't, not using uh, uh, the salary or we, we, we taxonomies or, or other things or scores things. So um, we are restricting to RDF ours because those are the ones that for us enable inference and reasoning. And we believe that's the added value of semantic technology. That's why we are restricting to this. So, this means that just to give a very uh, known example for the IC common information model, well, it is in the energy domain, a very important one. Uh, it's UML. You might even say that it is an ontology if you want, but there is not an RDF our version, not at least an official one uh, uh, published by IC. So at the end, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not in there. So there could be more cases like this. Uh, next slide, we have a challenge about sustainability. Uh, and it's like there are a lot of projects that, well, at least I'm aware, we are aware they are developing further ontologies because there is a need for that, because the one existing sometimes are not enough. Perfect. But what should we do then with these ontologies? Like in the case of the Interconnect project, I know because I'm <laughs> leading the, the work there on this, but at least I know that we develop, it starts from something, for example, for Saref, we develop and then I know how to bring them back for, for the project and helping. But I'm not sure that all the projects actually know. So sustainability is important. Is there, should we then put this in the, our ontology landscape? And the question we should ask ourselves is like, how do we make sure, how do we help these projects to know and to make as simple as possible the process then of standardization again of, of, of these contributions uh, and not at the end of the project but it's something that it's it's part intrinsic part uh, of the project already at the beginning of the project uh, if we go to the next uh, slide adoption it seems that there is already well projects that are actually uh, making solutions at a high tier level maturity level in several uh, environments i just mentioned some of them energy building or water domains but it's not really well known so we really need to disseminate uh, people partners members stakeholders are looking for okay <laughs> one minute and probably it's it's uh, it's finished. So I just mentioned these challenges. Anyways, semantic experts are a few, and we need more uh, more support in that. And uh, uh, probably there are uh, uh, just a few challenges to mention. I will not go through the slide, but I guess the slide will be available anyways. So in the next slide, the challenge, if we go to them, it's the usability. A lack of tool support and usability of these ontologies and, and, and tools. So it's very important, uh, especially for non-semantic non experts, which are the vast majority of sites. And if we go to the last, 
uh, I think it's standardization. So again, uh, how to standardize then these ontologies? It's really not clear for them. And sometimes standardization is, is seen as a very long process. And sometimes it can be done quick, also when requirements are, are actually uh, clear. So uh, I think that's the last one, because if we go to the next, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. So uh, thank you very much. And of course, later we will have more interesting discussion. Thank you very much. So thank you, Laura. Um, so we are trying to keep the time so that we can have also some questions, uh, which is also a key part of this workshop. So we go now to Mauro Dragoni uh, with a talk on uh, uh, interoperability, uh, so semantic interoperability in regards to Etsy, the smart end to end group. Go ahead. Okay, so good afternoon to everyone. I hope that you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, so I'm Mauro Dragoni and I'm a research scientist of uh, FBK, a research center located in Trentino, Italy. And today I'm here on behalf of the, of the Smart M2M uh, working group for talking about uh, the activities that uh, we do concerning the development of ontologies uh, and with the aim of uh, um, uh, supporting the IoT world uh, towards the uh, uh, the augmentation of the interoperability levels between between devices. So uh, in in the in the first slide, the next slide, I want to highlight which which, which might be an interesting point from the knowledge engineering aspect because uh, one of the uh, most common questions is that uh, if uh, if the ontologies are uh, really an effective way to achieve high level of interoperability because uh, in the beginning of the of the workshop uh, in during the presentation of the onto commons. Uh, uh, project, uh, this is a fact that uh, has not been took for granted, because uh, while from the knowledge engineer perspective, uh, uh, it is quite straightforward to believe that uh, uh, the use of ontologies is definitely a good way for achieving high level of interoperability, but this aspect is uh, actually not really perceived outside the uh, semantic wise uh, research uh, in industrial areas. Um, so uh, what we are doing uh, concerning the, um, the uh, achievement of the interoperability through ontology. So in the next slide, just I want to introduce uh, what uh, is a smart m2m that is the working group that i represent today so smart m2m is a technical committee of etsy the european telecommunication standard institute and the acronym m2m obviously stays for machine to machine uh, and the aim, main aim that we have is to develop standards enabling uh, the creation of machine to machine services and applications with uh, um, a special focus uh, to the IoT uh, domain. Um, Smart M2M is also part of one M2M that is a global initiative concerning the machine-to-machine -machine communication. And we uh, work in stick to our collaboration with them to produce specifications, uh, enable the users to build platforms uh, and services in which devices can be connected and, and we can also share information. So in the next slide, just uh, a, a, a list of which are the responsibilities of Smart M2M because obviously our aim are very close to the 1M2M one, but uh, since we are part of the European Commission in some way, we have to take into account also all the European policy and uh, the requirements that um, has to be taken into account when we design, we decide to design uh, new ontologies for support or new to define new specifications for supporting the creation of both machine-to-machine uh, -machine services and um, uh, and application. And this is an important aspect that uh, we always have to take into account. So in the next slide, just which are the list of the area of exp of activities that we do, we don't only design ontologies. Uh, but uh, we also aim to, uh, one of our goals is also to, um, to publish specifications about the vertical domains that uh, we address and that we discuss with the European Commission that can be uh, relevant for the, uh, uh, the evolution of the uh, IoT uh, communication. And also we propose uh, all uh, the, the outcomes of our activities as uh, standards 
that uh, could be adopted at the European level uh, to introduce them uh, in the um, regulatory guidelines of the European Commission with the aim also not to foster the interoperability within Europe, but also outside, outside Europe where possible. One of the main activities that have been performed in the last years uh, for uh, um, within, in, from the Smart M2M working group is for sure the creation of SARF. SARF, in, in the next slide, please. Um, there are several ways, obviously, to describe what the SARF uh, is, but obviously the most important one is the fact that SARF is, SARF is an ontology, is a conceptual model. SARF stands for um, a Smart Application Reference Ontology. Uh, has been designed to enable the interoperability between solutions from different providers, especially uh, with, a, with, with a view on the IoT, uh, IoT sector. So SARF focuses, obviously I will not describe all the content of the ontology today, but I only wanted to mention that the SARF focuses of the main concept of a device that is defined, that is defined as a, a possible tangible object that is deployed in several environments ranging from smart cities to smart building, uh, wearables, uh, water management, energy management, uh, and so on and so forth. The, um, SARF uh, as ontology has been, has been uh, thought also as a, as a modular artifact that started from a core model is the one that you can show that you can see in this uh, in this slide can be used uh, as a sort of predefined building blocks for extending it for specific vertical domains that I will list later. Uh, this is not the only way for showing SARF. So if we can go to the next slide, um, SARF is also a set of technical specifications that are linked with uh, all uh, the different vertical domains that we uh, um, that we addressed. In the next slide, we can show that uh, SARF is also um, a portal in which uh, we provide a very user-friendly documentation for explaining how SARF can be used by different providers for, for describing the devices that they build, and also, for example, how to connect such devices uh, in, in a standard and interoperable way. Next slide, please. Uh, we always have we also have a repository for developers in which for each uh, SARF extension we provide the definition of the ontology, the documentation, diagrams, all the requirements that led to the development of the ontology, and also all the examples showing how each concept and property, so each element of each SARF extension can be used in a real in a real scenario. Uh, in the in the last slide concerning SARF, uh, I wanted to recap. I want to recap uh, which are the list of the vertical domains that have been addressed uh, from uh, 2017 until uh, until now, um, ranging from uh, very uh, different domains, uh, ranging from the energy buildings, smart lifts. Uh, that is the the last one that we developed last year. Wearables. Uh, yeah, uh, healthcare, etc. Domains that are uh, quite also different from each other, but built uh, by starting from the common view of uh, uh, using a, 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 a shared set of concepts in order to enhance the interoperability, not only between within the single domain, but also between the different the different domains. Uh, the work. Uh, on uh, on uh, SARF led to uh, um, in, the in the next slide, please, uh, to a set of uh, um, lessons learned concerning this uh, journey towards uh, reaching the interoperability by using ontology. But start uh, SARF started uh, a lot of years before I joined the team, actually, uh, from the vision of common vision of of, of uh, some people of. Uh, uh, from the explicit explicit need provided by uh, by the industry um, for um, uh, for working together in the next slide please uh, uh, towards the achievement of the interoperability uh, obviously what we needed uh, is uh, uh, to have the 
and that what we we had was the support uh, from the world of standardization particularly from the world of etsy in our case um, uh, from the early stage together with uh, a sort of consensus that was provided also by parties that were that were neutral with respect to uh, the um with, with respect to, to the aim of creating SARF in order to build the ontology in a more, uh, let me say, uh, transparent and uh, uh, not biased uh, uh, biased way. Obviously, the the journey that uh, we that we started several uh, years ago um, had a lot of relevant and useful uh, outcomes. Uh, but also there are a lot of challenges that are still uh, still uh, open that are that I recap in the next uh, uh, in the next uh, the next slide, uh, ranging from uh, so if you can go to the last one perfect uh, ranging from the fact that uh, the involvement of uh, the final stakeholders is always a must for uh, allowing people like me and like our the smart and group uh, for designing these uh, um, these are tools like SARF that uh, are an enabler for reaching, um, for working towards the uh, the interoperability uh, goal. Uh, obviously, all the know-how and all the methodology and the process for building this um, this kind of artifacts is not uh, is not to be take for granted because uh, uh, it requires effort from uh, from a lot of people having different expertises and also having different uh, skills. Uh, but uh, thanks to uh, what we learned from this from this experience, even if this uh, remain always a challenge when we decided to address a new vertical domain, uh, it is uh, uh, it demonstrated to be a, a winning methodology for uh, for obtaining the positive uh, outcomes that we had until now. So with this one, I want to thank you uh, for, uh, for, for the attention and then uh, we'll leave the, uh, the workshop open for the, for the questions. Thank you, Mauro. We continue now with Antonio Kung, who provides the final talk before the questions and answers. Open the AI focus on standardization for interoperability. Um, I'm taking the screen or you are taking the screen? Okay, good. So uh, Valentin is modern. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm making a presentation which we do in the OpenDI project. Myself, uh, I'm just a participating to OpenDI. I'm not a partner. So you see the list of partners uh, below. Okay, they have a working group called uh, TF3 on uh, digital platforms, and uh, they wanted to have a report where we focus on interoperability. Okay, in platforms. So can you get the next next slide, please? So uh, yeah, so I was introduced myself. So I am the CEO of Trialog. It's a company working on IoT systems. We are known in the smart meter level, vehicle charging and connected vehicles. I'm also the co-chair of uh, the working group standardization at IoTI. And I'm involved in uh, many, many uh, standardization committees. Can you go to the next slide? <clears throat> so I wanna highlight the fact that uh, uh, there is a, a community of work in Europe they were especially strong in Europe to focus on data spaces, okay? And on top, you have uh, the overall goal that is uh, on the left, uh, uh, European and research projects uh, for, uh, associated with industry initiatives. The objective is to provide, uh, to champion, uh, to deploy building blocks coming from research industry uh, into industry solutions, okay? So to this end, uh, we have uh, associations, we have projects. So um, I didn't mention onto Commons and EUIT, but they, they are part of it on the support comments. Sorry, I should have changed, <laughs> now I realized, okay. And uh, we uh, are working on four position papers. One has been published by OpenDI last year, and three are already uh, available in draft form, and they will be published officially uh, this, uh, this fall. They all relate to, um, uh, architecture and interoperability, okay? And the objective would be that those inputs would be provided for uh, standardization, okay? Get the next slide. The first one is uh, OpenDI design paper, which was produced uh, last year. 
and uh, uh, I think uh, very much under the influence of fireware architect, I would say, uh, where they provide uh, a number of, uh, let's say, technical and governance building blocks, the 12 building blocks, okay? So this is uh, rather well accepted. I've seen these slides presented many times. So go to the next slide. Then uh, we have uh, paper number two, which is quite interesting because it's uh, IoTI paper on the integration of IoT edge computing in data space, okay? So I want to highlight uh, um, three things. First of all, uh, a recommendation that uh, you cannot have data space without thinking how you're going to integrate IoT and digital twins, okay? The second thing is uh, actually that uh, in this paper, there were again 12, the magic number, principles uh, provided for data space. And uh, uh, so it could be uh, the starting point for the family of standards. Okay. The third is uh, we, since in IoTI we work on complex system, we are architects. So we have thought about uh, what kind of uh, data space standards we would need. And you see that you have a whole bunch starting on top with use cases, concepts, processes, architecture, interoperability, systems and ecosystems, okay. Get to the next line. So BDVA uh, is uh, uh, also the champion of uh, data and AI. And uh, this uh, paper is uh, focusing on the need to have interoperability at the metadata level, okay? So describing what is the data uh, is some data which you want to interoperate with, okay? This is also available. Get to the next slide. And I want to get to this one because this one is uh, the, I would say, currently the culminating one. Uh, it's also available and it includes the uh, thinking from four domains, okay? Uh, agriculture, smart manufacturing, energy, and, um, and um, health, okay? And uh, what we did is actually in this working group coming from the four domains, we added the fifth group uh, which was uh, standardization people. And uh, we have invited about 10 experts from standardization to work on that. So basically there were about 50 people working on this document. Okay, can you get to the next slide? So in a nutshell, what it is, is this, okay? So you have to construct uh, a convergence and the standard should support this convergence, okay? And it's always at two level. On the left, it's how do you build a, platform or federated platform that you can use uh, to, to achieve a data exchange, okay? And how do you, on top of it, uh, or associated with it, create interoperability, okay? So on the left, uh, well, actually we can go to the next slide and I will explain more in detail, okay? So concerning architecture, the approach is uh, that uh, you need to have so-called reference architecture documents, okay? And we follow the ISO, IEC, IEEE 42010 uh, standard architecture description, as well as the work uh, uh, from AG8 on what you call meta reference architecture, which is actually how do you describe architecture documents so that the end of, at the end of the day, you could put them together and get a solution, okay? So you have a construction from the foundation to the top where you use uh, unified building blocks. So maybe one of the 12 or the 12 building blocks mentioned in the OpenDI paper will be there. You have uh, technology and uh, 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 technology uh, building blocks, okay, for some digital twin AI. And you have, uh, you start above to have vertical domains uh, solutions, okay? So for instance, uh, energy, you could have uh, SCAM, okay? So get to the next slide. And this is uh, the example I wanted to show. So uh, on the left, uh, this is the intention, how you construct the digital platform. On the right, it's a construction, okay? So you, you pick up, uh, you do your shopping, you pick up whatever building blocks you need. Then on top, you use the patterns that are important for you. So for instance, uh, the SCAM uh, is absolutely uh, needed. Uh, I think no one in energy can do an architecture without using SCAM today. And then at the end, you have a solution architecture. If we do like this, there's a hope that uh, you can still uh, achieve cross-domain interoperability. Okay, get to the next slide. So concerning interoperability, it's the same, okay? So it is interesting to have a presentation on the SARF and the Smart M2M uh, before me, because this is extending it precisely to cover the process, okay? 
So uh, there are three things uh, you have to do to construct interoperability. First of all, where do you want to have interoperability? And this is an architecture consideration, by the way. And here we provide an example where we have a digital twin and an AI system, okay? So this influence where we want to have interoperability. Then the second is uh, the process of creating interoperability, which is called here interoperability case, okay? And actually in the uh, Etsy uh, uh, portal, you have a, a document which explain the method to de describe, to, de to define a, a SARA ontology, okay? So this would be part of here. And the whole process is defined here. And once you have this, at the end, you have the interoperability profile, which is actually all the things uh, that uh, you need to follow so that you interoperate, okay? And uh, you can put, uh, so yeah, actually I've put here SARF ontology building block and the uh, 21A23-3 semantic interoperability standard, which I am one of the co-editor. And uh, we are working on the next stage, which is policy and behavioral interoperability, okay? So the construction show, follow some principles that are explained in uh, those ISO standards. Uh, and uh, in particular, in the 21823-5, which will start next year, we'll explain this in detail. But this will allow people to say, we have in Europe, lots of people that want to use SARF. They will just use this and do it properly. So they will have here the SARF building block, uh, which is mature because it has been assured and checked here, okay? And for a need that has been checked here. Go to the next slide. Yeah, that's it. That's. Uh, my presentation, uh, Ute. Thank you, Antonio. Okay, thank you to all the speakers. We now can uh, go to questions and answers. So please drop your questions on questions and answers or raise your hand, your comments, questions. Uh, in the meanwhile, while we wait, I'm going to just ask a few questions. So we have around seven minutes. Um, so I would ask Laura, so Laura, the, in terms of the IOTI working group work, so are you also developing uh, uh, online catalogs uh, or so what is the status of these? Are the, are the ontologies collected? So the landscape report, is it just based on paper or is there a catalog where people can upload or download uh, uh, ontologies? Yeah, good question. It's uh, in this moment. It's a, it's a report. It's paper. Although in the link, uh, while well, it's always possible to upload a new ontology in the sense that there is the link to the survey that that I mentioned, so that's always available. And uh, no, I mean, although it would be wonderful actually to, to do something a bit more, but yeah, just, just remember that it's a voluntary uh, based group uh, in IOTI, so we do what we can. And if we find support from the projects, then of course it's, it's much easier, but at the moment is the report is, as you see, basically. Although okay. we, 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 we are thinking eventually in the next release to add at least some, a little bit of analysis statistic but it's not interactive uh, at least no <laughs> okay so we have a question on the chat from Bunzerm. Uh, what is the relation between onto common industry space and the iotii landscape database so uh, maybe uh, hedy yeah so uh, for now there is no link so, uh, I mean, on this C portal for Onto Commons, we are collecting ontologies and we are putting them available as files and uh, there is possibility to go through the ontology and so on. But uh, for now, there is no link with the uh, AIoT uh, database, but I think it should be. <laughs> so as, as, as one place, I mean, this is one of the problems that um, different industrial stakeholders mentioned that when they look for ontologies in their domain, they don't know where they can find those ontologies. So the idea is to have one portal in which we have all ontologies related to industry that are uh, available, accessible, and, uh, and uh, well-documented. Uh, 
I may add, I think uh, AIOTI started earlier, so there was no other initiative when we started. So uh, what's in common, I think it's the format because uh, the uh, onto common was uh, based also on the same survey, the same question that we do. So the format, uh, the questions and what's behind it's, uh, it's overlapping, which is uh, definitely a good thing because then onto common to use something that was there, which is nice. Uh, I think the domain is, uh, uh, overlapping to a certain extent, uh, but also a little bit different. Uh, therefore, the relation is there in the sense that it's more manufacturing industry and so forth in onto commons, while in uh, you've seen the domains also in the, in the ontology landscape, which is IUT with all the sectors, vertical sectors that you can find in IUT. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had something else in mind, but it just uh, lived away. So I think those two things could, could, could just uh, complement what was just said. Okay, so perhaps this is a good opportunity to cooperate and to enrich the uh, in industry space uh, database online. Perhaps this this could could be interesting for LTI. So one question to all uh, while we wait, we still have a few minutes. Um, so in terms of ontologies, so you all presented different ontologies across different domains, but the, the, let's say there was more focus in terms of the energy and the manufacturing domains. So what, what is happening? What is the status? What are the challenges in terms of the, of the health uh, vertical domain where we also handle, so we also have a strong need for semantic interoperability and we are handling personal uh, data? So we don't know. <laughs> no, yes, I want to say uh, TC215 is the health uh, uh, domain in sanitation, and uh, we know that they work quite a bit, okay? And uh, it's uh, an example of a potential silo, basically. So uh, we need to interact with them. So it's not, it's, 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 it's a little bit poor. So my colleague Amélie has the liaison officer now from SC42 and SC41 to TC215. So we need to start to create a liaison. What I have to say is each time you work with stand, uh, people in health, they are very mature, okay? But uh, we cannot help being siloed because it, it was the, the, the problem of the past, okay? So today, what we do, uh, we need to go to things. So now I'm uh, asking question to, to Laura. Do we have a SARF for health? I think we have, right? Okay, so please answer. <laughs> Yes, we do. We do, Antonio. Yes. Okay. And uh, actually, I have to say that uh, in the Open DI uh, paper, uh, we had uh, people from health and people uh, from uh, energy, uh, smart manufacturing, agriculture uh, working together. And you can see that uh, the, the people from health, they are very mature. Okay. So it's time now to work, to talk together and to combine and to have those things put together. So uh, okay. it's, it's a big, uh, uh, I think, uh, challenge, but it's a challenge we have to solve. Yeah, I'd agree with Antonio on that. Um, it, is, it seems to be a common problem in between, you know, <clears throat> organizations and uh, associations, that, the standards developed organizations that are working on horizontal standards and specifically sector, sector specific standardization, like, you know, the health or automotive, et cetera, that you often get this, as Antonio says, a siloed approach. Um, and it's not that the, those areas are not mature or that there, there isn't um, a willingness to uh, co collaborate. It's just, there isn't really an easy structure to, 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 to do it. So it's a, a, it's a constant um, um, challenge to actively go out and pursue the, the, these different groupings and to and to offer offer the, the hand of collaboration in, in uh, um, to them to try and support the work they're done. I see I'm doing some work with on um, uh, tr trusted uh, trusted wearable wearable technology um, from a health perspective uh, with with IEEE and um, again a brilliant experts working in that particular field and they're looking at at um, issues associated with with insulin pumps and uh um uh, uh yeah your heart monitors etc and and they, they they tend to look at it really from a a, a, a very health focused perspective rather than a, a broader iot perspective so it's, it's 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 good to have that exposure to those type of groupings and their their um uh, their expertise is uh, is needed you know looking at, at global interoperability issues um but again it's 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 difficult to bring all 
collaborations together under, under the one roof. There's a, a lot of people doing a lot of things. But we okay, should continue to do that at the same time. Okay, thank you. So silos and uh, okay, uh, thank you, Ray. Um, so we are almost, I would say we are now on time, but uh, so we have a question I would ask Eddie to answer quickly, Bunserm, because I think it's important for the audience. So basically Bunserm is asking in the chat, how can someone get, uh, so upload an ontology into the industry space? Is there a vetting process? So is it open and uh, can an SDO or a, or a company basically upload this and how? So is there an API? So please, please provide a quick answer. Okay, I, I let Arco answer. <laughs> okay. Yes, I was jumping in. Uh, I mean, of course, it is open for anybody to upload the ontologies, but then inside the portal, we will actually maintain a, a, a subset of ontologies which will be uh, which will be aligned by the Onto Commons, and that will be part of the Onto Commons ecosystem. I mean, of course, ideally, we want to align. I mean, all the ontologies, but then it's not possible for the project timeline. But then it will go on in the future as a continuous. I mean, effort. Yes. Okay, thank you. So uh, we now stop this session. Welcome back, everyone. Um, so uh, we are now starting the second part of our workshop. Uh, they will start again with a uh, interactive session. Uh, so it will be a we will again present to you a very small quiz, and then uh, we will continue with a panel discussion with uh, with some experts in the ontological interoperability field. I have shared here in the chat one link. Uh, if you can please uh, click on it, uh, then you, you will see actually the question that we would like to, to address you. And I will also start sharing my screen so you can also see um, the different inputs that uh, we are gathering. In the meantime, I see that Harm is also uh, Harm Yan. Uh, I hope that I'm pronouncing your name correctly, has also made a comment about the SDOs. Uh, maybe Harm, as, uh, after this quiz, uh, we're also starting our panel discussion. We can also touch this point and uh, expand on it, as we have also some representative from, um, from SDOs here. Can, uh, by the way, can everyone see the link that I have shared? I will copy and paste it here again, just to make sure that all the attendees can see it. Okay. Hopefully uh, it is visible. I, I, I did not hear. I can uh, see it now, Rita. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so the, the question that we would like to ask you is the one that you can see also on my screen. So um, if you can actually share challenges and key priorities for applying ontology standard and standardization in five areas, um, in this uh, link that I have shared with you, actually you will see that there are five different blocks. Uh, one that is for ICT, uh, one for materials and manufacturing, another one for energy, then we have one for health, and the last one for agriculture. We have actually picked up these five domains, even though obviously th th there would have been many more, um, simply because they are connected to the presentation that, we ha that you have seen in the first part of our workshop. Uh, now, if you, um, let's say, see uh, all these five different boxes on your PC or your, um, or your cell phone, what you have to do is actually to include some comments. You, you can also just decide to include comments only on one of these. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, it, it is fine. Uh, the important thing is that at the very end, if you scroll down the page, you press submit. I mean, there is a um, there is a green uh, call to action. Let's say a green button. Please press it because if you do not do so, then we cannot see any contribution, any contributions here. Um, anyway, as this question is a little bit uh, more difficult to reply compared to the one that we have addressed to you at the very beginning, we will keep this open poll active also uh, for the rest uh, of the workshop. So in case you would like to with any comments also in the next 30 minutes, an hour, et cetera, feel free because you actually can. Uh, for us, anyhow, it would be very important to understand uh, what are the 
challenges really or um, what are the priorities in these areas um, because while in the first session it was very general uh, and so then we had a very general overview of what are the general uh, let's say inter uh, interoperability um, problems that, for example, you might uh, face. In this case, instead, we really want to understand if, for specific domain, there are uh, more problems compared to others. For example, uh, I see that. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a first comment, for example, about the agriculture. That is about the life cycle issues um, linked to the ecosystem management. Thank you. I, I will see if actually in the meantime, we also got other uh, replies in other sectors. Okay, for health quite a lot. Uh, so we have close communities uh, where uh, we need semantic interoperability to assist the use of for applications. And, but it is hard to achieve it because uh, we have fragmentation in closed environments. So actually, I see that here, information are not really open and shared uh, with the others. So yeah, it, it is a very <laughs> difficult problem. And here again, we have life cycle uh, issues in ecosystem like the agriculture. But then in case of health, we have also the security and privacy, which obviously considering that we are also working with a lot of sensitive data coming from patients is a very critical issue that cannot be um, forget. Um, for the energy, uh, okay, the, the life cycle, so for all the processes, <laughs> a very common uh, issue I see, uh, and especially because, okay, okay here, here people are really mentioning that we should understand where to apply ontologies and also uh, because there are cross-domain interoperability issues. And obviously, if any of our speakers would like also to comment on this, uh, feel free to uh, take on your mic and we can have a very uh, quick discussion. Um, then we have materials and manufacturing in where we really have a lot of standard, standards and ontology. So very often it is difficult to understand which is the best one uh, to, let's say, pick and then this also creates some integration problems. Uh, and here again, we have the life cycle issues because it is not clear exactly where to apply ontologies. And then we have also the brown field integration. That is, uh, oh, here we have more. <laughs> I, I did not realize that. Uh, um, and then, uh, yeah, also because uh, I see that here, we also have some lack of expertise. Uh, so, uh, People uh, would like to, uh, for example, apply ontologies, but they do not always understand how, how to do it. And for ICT, uh, we have an issue that is about the modularity and com composition utility. Hope <laughs> that I pronounce it correctly. Um, because actually here we have uh, separate modeling for different subdomains. Uh, then again, okay, the, the, the life cycle issues is something that, I mean, it doesn't matter the uh, area, let's say the domain that we are picking, it is always a common problem. Uh, then we have again the, then again here we have the trustworthiness of ontologies. Uh, that is also something that we have seen uh, in the previous one about the materials and manufacturing, if I'm not mistaken. And yes, I want to uh, give an example. Uh, sure, so, sure, Antonio, please. <clears throat> um, I was discussing ontologies uh, standardization. I was talking about uh, uh, ontology of the earth. And uh, before G Galileo, you would say the earth would be flat. So uh, do, we, do we trust it? Yes, we trusted it, okay? And then the, he nearly, he was nearly uh, dying, <laughs> Galileo, because, uh, and then uh, uh, now everyone knows it's round, okay? So uh, we know that uh, uh, ontologies represent knowledge, but knowledge is evolving. So one of the challenge is uh, making sure of the accuracy of knowledge with respect to the knowledge of other people, okay? So uh, we cannot have knowledge of the future, we must have knowledge of the present. And uh, this is always evolving, okay? So uh, there was a question about vetting uh, uh, ontologies, but also vetting whether they are synchronized with the knowledge of the day. And this is a huge issue. Right, thank you, Antonio, for also providing some, some background. And uh, indeed, let's say also um, some problems that uh, we might face also in introducing ontologies in new sectors. For example, it is that, for example, 
people also do not truly really understand the benefits. I mean, as, as you made the example for Galileo, uh, until when there is not a common um, understanding of the benefits of introducing ontologies, then uh, we might still find a lot of barriers uh, in, in this. So, yeah. And uh, then, okay, I see there actually here, um, someone made also a comment about the cross-domain interoperability that is also uh, um, very let's say, common uh, issue with saying the uh, semantic word. Um, then, uh, as I said, <clears throat> this uh, uh, this platform uh, will still be kept open. Uh, at the very end of our panel discussion, we can also open it again to see if in, if in the meantime other people made other contribution, and uh, we can also comment on it. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I would like actually to move to the last part of our uh, panel discussion. So I will also stop sharing my screen now. And uh, here I would like to welcome actually uh, four, uh, four uh, very special speakers uh, that are experts in the, in the field of semantic interoperability. And uh, this afternoon we have with us Stefano Borgo, uh, that is the head of the Laboratory for Applied Ontologies and also member of the International Association for Ontology and its application. Uh, we have Bunzerm Kulvan Tuyu, uh, that instead is the working group chair of the OA, um, OAGI, and then he also works in the engineering laboratory department at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And then we have with us also the Mauro Dragoni and Laura Daniele that you all got the opportunity to meet uh, in our pre um, previous presentation as they represent respectively the Etsy Smart M2M and the uh, IoT um, Working Group on Semantic Interoperability. So welcome uh, everyone. It, it is um, really a pleasure to now start an open discussion on uh, recommendations that we can bring uh, in the world of semantic interoperability. Uh, now I will ask you some questions and we can uh, all, you can all share your contributions on it. Uh, if any of the previous speakers uh, that have interviewed also uh, in the first session would like also to add any contributions, feel free. And in this session, actually, also if people from uh, that are currently attending uh, would like also to make some questions, uh, comments, etc., you are more than welcome. So take it this the, the next hour as a very open discussion where uh, we're really willing to hear more and understand uh, how, how we can overcome current challenges in this field. Um, so uh, as also, let's say, when we did the previous uh, game uh, in the first um, part of our workshop, uh, we saw that there were quite a lot of issues in terms of applying standards in the uh, manufacturing world. I might want to start our discussion with, the, uh, with a question linked to the manufacturing world. Uh, because in this particular sector, we are experiencing a lot of, a lot of high fragmentation um, because very often the information module, uh, models are dependent on protocols, for example. And it would be very nice to know um, if, for example, you have some suggestions on how we can further prevent this situation in the future. I might start maybe from Stefano and then I will pass the floor to Serm, Mauro, and then to Laura. Uh, so uh, Stefano, uh, if you can open your mic, then we can give you the floor. Thank you, Stefano. Oh, hi, Rita, thank you. Uh, so, well, um... Um, it is a, a little harder to answer this question for me, um, since uh, as, a, as a member of the association, uh, uh, we concentrate uh, on what uh, people said before it's perceived, uh, perceived uh, as a hard, so semantics. Uh, so the concern about protocols is a bit uh, outside of my domain, but Still, <laughs> uh, there was a, a nice example before, and I think I made by uh, Antonio. It was uh, it was talking about uh, um, digital twins, and there it was clear the separation, at least uh, in the in the in the sketch that he gave. So you have this more uh, uh, syntactical uh, level where you have the protocols that are essential, 
and then you have the semantical one. And uh, I think that that's uh, it's, uh, and it's a nice uh, case study when you can separate this. Uh, at the same time, I was thinking that uh, in cyber physical systems uh, that I believe uh, had mentioned at the beginning of somebody else, uh, uh, that separation is not really even meaningful. Uh, of course, we can separate the two of them, but the nature of cyber physical system is a full integration of all those levels. Uh, so there's no way <laughs> you can address uh, the issues of the, of the uh, protocols uh, and, the, and the fragmentation as a separated things. So, but going back to what we actually care from the point of view of the association and the technical committee on industry and uh, standards in that association, uh, which is exactly the, the semantical approach, the, the, uh, the, the suggestion we can, uh, we can give uh, is to change a little bit on the perspective of those uh, uh, standards. Um, they tend, uh, uh, even from direct experience, uh, they tend to, um, circumscribe uh, the, uh, the goal of the standard in a quite precise way, and then uh, to stick to that. Uh, which means uh, it makes sense uh, that you commit uh, with is already in the domain there, uh, but in a sense, uh, that it depends on the group, of course, but you, in a sense, uh, you lose uh, the, the more general view and the idea of being uh, of, of inclusion, or possibly being included. And that is, uh, it's just an attitude sometimes, but it's a source uh, of, uh, of this fr uh, fragmentation that I observe. But, but I'm pretty sure the people here have a much better experience than me on that. So that this okay. would be my first thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. It was, it, it, it was actually a difficult question, I mean, to to, to address. Um, I'm curious actually to see if uh, Serum uh, has a different perspective here. Um, yeah, like Stefano, I'm not so much into the, uh, the protocol, so I have some background, but um, in my opinion, the information model shouldn't, you know, should not have to uh, depend on the, uh, the protocol. It shouldn't be uh, you know, uh, protocol specific, but encoding of the information model may be and the data, you know, um, that respect the model may be protocol dependent. Um, but in my knowledge, I mean, there are several protocols um, that, uh, you know, quite independent to the encoding, you know, if you talk about like a multi-part multi -part mine, you know, over HTTP, um, you can, you know, specify, you know, what is in the, um, the envelope of the, uh, uh, of the message. Um, so, I mean, at NIST, we also develop like a tool um, that we work with industry to help develop and maintain data exchange models. Um, so that tool also operate at uh, more or less, uh, more like a protocol independent. So um, people can uh, create a different serialization to uh, encode the model and the, uh, the information uh, according to whatever, you know, transmission protocol they, uh, they want. Um, now the key is like, you know, if you put the data into a different uh, um, syntaxes, um, you know, how do you get back and correlate uh, those data that, you know, they're talking about the same thing. Um, so we, um, in that system, we also assign like a globally unique identifier for the entity. Um, so the assumption is that, you know, uh, this uh, GUID should be able to uh, help uh, you know, uh, map um, the, uh, the data, which you know should respect the same model, but you know encode it uh, differently. Um, now we haven't tried to uh, experiment and test that, so it would be a good uh, study case um, to to see whether this uh, you know assignment of a uh, GUID to a different enti uh, to entities um, you know that are serialized differently. Um, can still be, um, you know, route trip uh, back, you know, and, and you know, um, uh, different um, uh, system can still understand each other, you know, even though they are reading a different uh, uh, protocol and syntax, but, you know, with this uh, globally unique ID, maybe they can still uh, interpret. Thank you, Sarum. Uh, Mauro, uh, do you want also to provide your perspective? Uh, yeah. Um... Probably, but just my two cents about, about this, that uh, what uh, that is, uh, I mean, this can be recapped as a, one of the uh, um, 
one of the, the big challenge of, uh, uh, of semantic interoperability in the sense that uh, uh, also finding a sort of agreement between these protocols of these information models could be a strategy for avoiding fragmentation in the future in the sense that uh, uh, having the possibility of representing information models created uh, starting from a protocol with uh, I mean by using another one uh, could be a good way for uh, um, obtaining high highest level higher levels of interoperability between different uh, manufacturing sectors and also to try to push in some way uh, also companies and on adopting existing protocols. For example, one of the exercises that uh, we are doing right now in uh, is Matem 2 m is uh, ready to also to check uh, which is the, the interoperability level between the SARF core ontology and the 1M 2 m based model. No? Uh, and really in this situation that uh, starts from uh, quite similar representation on quite similar information models. So also there are some um, in different ways for representing information, for collecting information from devices, et cetera. So I think that maybe working all together toward the possibility of uh, aligning all these protocols or try to, to, uh, to design a common protocol about, proto common protocol about uh, I mean, for representing all possible information models and the alignment between them could be one uh, interesting uh, direction to, uh, um, to follow. Thank you, Mauro. So then, then I mean, with, with the interoperability, also let's say um, some uh, summarizing a little bit uh, what also the uh, Sermon uh, Stefano uh, were sharing could be really the key also to overcome this issue that is very um, relevant in the in the manufacturing domain. La Laura, do you agree with this statement or? Uh, do yeah. you have another idea? No, no, I, I agree. Well, I'm not expert in the manufacturing domain itself, but I have quite some experience with the protocols uh, story. Uh, I'm switching hats now, not from IoTI, but more, most from the SARS perspective, because we started a long time ago. And uh, well, uh, interoperability, we all know uh, we have different levels of interoperability, starting from connectivity, and then you go syntactic, uh, then you go semantic, and then you go organizational business and so forth. So uh, the underlining idea is that we separate, there is really a separation of concerns of the, what we do at the semantical level from the protocols. We don't want in the ontologies things that have to do with the specific things of the protocol. Uh, as an example, when we first developed SARF in 2014, we used, uh, well, assets in general, called assets, which were protocols, standards, ontologies, if there were ontologies, very few at the time. So what we did to create SARF, we, we, we really analyzed those these that sometimes were thousands of pages of PDF specifications of stuff, to, and there were so many of those. But at the end, very su surprisingly, if you look at the concepts semantically that all those protocols were actually, uh, uh, defining, they were not that many. So actually the ontology on top of all these protocols, so the information, the knowledge that you have on top, it's not that much compared, of course, to the differences that every protocol, the data formats, the way the data models that are behind. So I think we should clarify what we are doing here. So when we are doing these ontologies, we are really abstracting and we are leaving the plethora of, 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 of protocol standards. There are a lot, they have done a great job and it's fine. We don't want to replace them. We want to go on top of them and harmonize the information. So at the end, those ontologies can be used with many, many of these protocols because the concepts there are the common ones. So I think, uh, uh, well then, I don't know exactly in the manufacturing domain if this step still needs to be done and maybe there are not yet these ontologies on top, but I think in other domains, we really did it well. And if I take an example of the energy domain, we, we do have different level of ontologies, like something is very general, more conceptual, it's a few concepts, something when it's about specific, well, it gets very much refined, and then you can have a level of, of, of ontologies of Sarah for Energy, for example, it's 
it's already very much reflecting that the richness and then a lot of information that it's in, in that it's in specific uh, in specific standards with with, with a lot of data uh, the, the, the notions that uh, that are quite specific so we might even think how we want to structure this of course uh, but the important is that we, we we really separate the two things protocols are protocols and it's fine they're there but at semantic level we are doing something else which is really well the knowledge we, we are we are going further and further so yeah Thank you, Laura. And um, also, based on uh, the feedback that we got so far, I mean, we see that um, actually using interoperability can really overcome a lot of issues. And in your experience, um, have you ever noticed, I mean, um, have you ever, or let's say, um, thought of a particular domain in which it is particularly hard to implement interoperability uh, rules? Is to me or to it, 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 it is actually to everyone. Maybe we can do the, the other, uh, the other two. I mean, tour in in the opposite side, maybe. Um, so, uh, so again, question is whether. Yeah, no. Uh, uh, I I just wanted to know if um, there is a domain uh, in your experience in which it was particularly hard, challenging to implement interoperability uh, rules. It's always uh, hard. I mean, in it's it's always hard in, in, in every domain, but I think for me personally, what's most challenging and I'm experiencing now is to, is to go cross domain. So I say energy when we talk, but it's about energy buildings also. The area where, where we go cross domain now is uh, home buildings and energy and smart grids. And the challenging part is that there are already standards, uh, data models and stakeholders in each of these domains. And they have a history, long history, and they have developed standards and they have a certain mindsets and so forth. And now just, just crossing, going together, even the data models very good for one domain, but now we are going across and use cases are so so. So there are some concepts that are overlapping. So it's something that goes, it's energy, but it becomes also mobility. It becomes also something about so. It's, it's tricky that part. So indeed, some of the data models or ontologies I want to call, they, they don't have enough concepts because they were conceived historically for one domain, but now we are going cross domains. So, and, and this, is, uh, this is challenging uh, even more than uh, uh, one domain, which is already very challenging by itself to create the interoperability by itself. But I think uh, it's, uh, there is a lot of awareness of this. It's going in the right direction. And then uh, agreement and consensus, consensus is, is, is always, uh, always important. But if you can reach that and engage stakeholders uh, with you on the way, it's always, uh, it's always very important. Thank you, Laura. I see that actually Ray also made a comment that he said that this is also very applicable for smart cities. So uh, actually, when you work on, with uh, cross domains, then I mean, obviously, the um, level of challenge, let's say, or the difficulty increases. Um, not sure if Stefano, Mauro, Serm, you have the, the same perspective like Laura or you have faced, I mean, a sector that in particular, even though, I mean, it was not cross domain, uh, it was, I mean, very, very difficult to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to apply interoperability rules. I, I mean, if I can start, I only want to say that I totally agree with what Laura just said, because it's uh, definitely true. I mean, when you have different domains, you have different history, different traditions, uh, uh, different perspectives in representing information. So that's definitely the biggest challenge uh, to, to address, actually, because in some, some domains, there are, I mean, a, a lot of very good ontologies and information models that are uh, complete, but uh, the problem is that when you try to make this domain talk each other. Yeah, uh, I mean, that, that, yeah, I, I agree with that too. Oh, sorry, Stefano, go no, ahead. Okay, no, no, go, please go ahead, Sam. Um, yeah, I, 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 I agree with the law also. I mean, I guess we can basically almost generalize to like the larger the scope, the more difficult uh, it is going to be. Yeah, for all those reasons that uh, the other panelists already uh, Mentioned. So, so that, that seems uh, I, I should be the, the, the negative guy here. <laughs> so I try to defend the opposite uh, uh, position. Um, 
So uh, it doesn't really matter, I would guess, but I'm, I'm speaking general. It doesn't really matter uh, the domain. It depends how deep you go into that. Uh, because everything has to do with something which is a uh, no, distinction between object and features and properties. And then you have the dynamics of things that change. And uh, some domains are just the most superficial. They like uh, to make uh, some uh, very general distinction because I don't know, they care only about planning and nothing else. Then it's, it's, it's fairly easy. Uh, uh, but uh, it's not that the domain is easy, it's just uh, because uh, your purpose, your concern uh, in that modeling is simple. Uh, so no, no uh, I think a co complication comes everywhere. I, you, it depends how deep you want to go into modeling that domain. And uh, in this sense, uh, then uh, I want also to try to raise again the, my previous issue. Um, so there is a tendency to see uh, ontology and the work in ontology in the classical, um, let's say, computer science approach, where you separate uh, uh, the meaning of the things uh, and uh, the, 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 the language you use to exchange the meaning. But we know, uh, at least from the late 80s, that there is no language without, without semantics. So even the protocols, they have their own semantics. And that determines what you can say to the protocols. <laughs> and this is one of the reasons that people have been complaining about first of the logic in ontology. And you know, we just are happy with our most of the time. So can you imagine <laughs> what you what you miss <laughs> using it? So yeah, it, it is uh it is much more sophisticated when you go and see what are the constraints that your initial choices using our separating semantics from syntax and separating the protocols from whatever capital semantics. But when you start to make a distinction, you already cut a lot of hard problems for good reasons, because you want things to work. Uh, but little by little, when we we'll see that we need something more, those problems will come back. So let's say, let's be happy at the moment. <laughs> Uh, but don't expect that this will stay that way. When, whenever we will have a better system and we need more integration, we will have to resume those problems. Thank you, Stefano. And uh, also, let's see. Oh, sorry, Antonio, you, you also want to make a comment here. Yeah, I just Please. make a comment, <laughs> sorry. sorry. And uh, it it's, uh, it's relates to my experience on uh, programmers. Uh, when I was a programmer, a programmer contains lots of knowledge. And then you realize that uh, in order to have uh, software engineering, you need to encapsulate uh, the, what you implement and have interfaces. And uh, so for the ADA language, you have the encapsulation, you have a manifest, you have all those things, okay? So basically you structure your knowledge into uh, implementation uh, knowledge versus interface knowledge and capability knowledge, okay? And it could be that uh, because we want to achieve that level for, for uh, semantics, semantic meaning, we should also do the same. And uh, the previous speaker said, okay, some domains do it better because probably naturally they structured the knowledge or and the ontology in such a way that some knowledge you don't need it, okay? So in the ISO 21823, uh, we, we talk about knowledge perimeter. So uh, let's try to delimit the knowledge perimeter. So there is one knowledge perimeter, which uh, you know you need to publish for cross domain. So you have to be more careful because of course, uh, uh, if it is not accurate, uh, then uh, something is wrong. But if you have anticipated that, uh, then it's better. So uh, we have knowledge but we have knowledge about the structure of knowledge, which we can change, okay? And to me, uh, this will be key to help uh, interoperability across the domain. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, I, I was also um, wondering, um, let's say, while we were also having this discussion, if, um, what, in your opinion, what is also the role of CSAs or, for example, uh, funded initiatives in this context? I mean, how, for example, let's say a project like UIUT or Onto Commons or any others uh, can actually also support um, the SDOs or any other institutions that uh, work uh, in this area. Uh, maybe we can, okay, La Laura, I see that you have <laughs> unmuted yourself. So then, okay, you will be the first. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. So I think there are two ways. So to, to, to support the uh, uh, SDO standardization bodies, it's important to go to people, disseminate and make understand. Uh, uh, I, what I always notice is that people projects, uh, well, they know that there is standardization and mostly because at the end uh, you have to deal with the uh, European Commission because you have to show that you have done, some, done some, some standardization, but not because they really know. But the point is that standardization bodies, at least now I talk for, 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 <laughs> for Mauro, for Smart and 2M, the idea is to involve people, engage people and use the input because these are the most valuable and then bring it back to standardization in a way that it's easy and we think we are trying to do and reach out to people but i realized that people don't know how to do it projects don't know even how to standardize and how to do it so go there and and and, and help so for for all of us try to make this easier and and it's a process that people can participate it's not for a few people that belong to that at the end, there are still decisions to be taken, of course, but but it's 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 a process. It's something that can involve uh, and openness is very important. So the way Etsy, for example, is doing is very important because it's opening even for non Etsy members when it's about Sarah ontology standardization, which is which is very important. Uh, second of all, there are the uh, the, the the projects. Uh, they they need to know. They need to incorporate somehow also this uh, this uh, this standardization. And then also when they make ontologies, I think it was a point I raised at the beginning. Also, we can't just have ontologies being done and 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 and, and then they stop after the project. So there, there should be a, a plan, a sustainability exploitation plan, something, because it's just a pity that then, uh, yeah, something just, just stops with, with, with projects and there was very, very valuable work in there. Yeah. So and I think you can help. So there are so many projects, but those actions can help uh, to bring the results uh, to, to make the instead also of each project having to know the others and have this this mutual interaction, you can be this this bridging this umbrella that 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 can bring together the things and 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 results that that's how I see it. Yeah, thank you, Laura. And, and also connected to the uh, sustainability point you were raising. Um, also, when uh, in, in the first part of our workshop, when we had the interactive session, uh, something that uh, our let's say the audience was commenting was that, um, especially in the manufacturing domain, we have a lot of ontologies, and very often it is also difficult to uh, understand which one to consider. Let's say also because so many, let's say, are are used then most probably there is not a clear um, sustainability path, let's say they are then created, then they are no, no longer used, let's say, but then this create a kind of um, uh, box of, uh, let's say, a lot of different ontologies that then need to be, uh, in which it is really important also to understand how, which one, I mean, are relevant and also what are the ones for which it is very important to uh, continue working on, let's say. Um, uh, regarding this, uh, the question that I was asking before about the relevance that also um, European initiative can have incorporating also uh, with standardization, um, uh, let's say, organizations. Uh, Serm, as you are actually from NIST, uh, do you, uh, what is your point of view from uh, about this? If, if, if you want, I can actually uh, rephrase again the question if, you, if I wasn't clear, uh, because actually, okay, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Could you rephrase the question because I heard sure. something about CSA and I don't know what it is. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I was wondering, for example, how projects like, let's say, Unto Commons or UIUT that have been presented today uh, can also cooperate with SDOs uh, in order to uh, help uh, in, for example, defining better uh, interoperability rules, for example, or they, they can actually provide, for example, some concrete example of what the gaps are. I mean, it, is it possible to cooperate in an efficient way between SDOs and, and projects? Yeah, I think um, providing some sort of like a domain independent um, ontology that is cutting across these uh, different SDO uh, might help um, because, yeah, SDOs uh, have uh, limited resources and they are good at their domain. 
um, you know, all these uh, domain independent um, um, entities, um, they usually want to uh, just pick up and reuse from somewhere. And, um, you know, um, evaluating um, this domain independent and, you know, kind of like give some explanation of, you know, what is the uh, uh, advantage, disadvantage, you know, for and cons of this uh, different competing domain dependent on policy. I think that could be uh, useful for the, uh, for the SDO and would help in probability. Thank you. Uh, Stefano Mauro, as you are actually on the other side, so you are involved in European project, what is your, your point of view here? No, actually Mauro is also in Etsy, so then you are actually in yeah, I can. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, it is any, anyway connected in some way with the with the work of the European Commission. In the sense that uh, um, my my feeling um, by checking the work that uh, that we we, had, we did in Etsy uh, until now is is Martin Twell in particular, and also the work that uh, uh, I did personally in some European projects. That the uh, the the um, I guess that the main issue. That has been already also mentioned by 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 now is that uh, the outcomes of a lot of initiatives is not really reused in the sense that every time we prepare a, new, a proposal for a new European project, you have to explicitly mention that you rely on the outcome and experience of several uh, of which are the the past European projects that already built something related to that. But then if the project is, is, is founded, you, I mean, a lot of times you start to develop things from scratch and, and no one check if you really do things that, I mean, they're reusing activities that, that, you, that, that you explicitly written in the, in the proposal. This is a big problem uh, as well as uh, also the dissemination aspect and the exploitation plans that Laura mentioned, uh, I, I mean, my, myself, we already we always aligned on a lot of things due to the, the, the expertise of, of uh, I mean, all the, the the thing, the tasks of, of our work. But uh, also, this is a, a very big problem also to disseminate in uh, uh, all the, the activities uh, and the the outcomes of the work. For just an example, also the activities that uh, you are doing with uh, with the onto commerce project in which. Uh, it's, I mean, to me, it's a pleasure to be involved from already one year. I mean, in the events that you organize, and some people from the semantic web community that actually should be quite aligned with the with, with the topics of uh, of your project. Ask me, oh, but they are really doing this one. Yes, no, uh, and <laughs> uh, and this is, uh, I mean, a big barrier. Maybe the last two years uh, due to the. COVID thinks, really thinks uh, it was, uh, I mean, a barrier for also for these activities, but uh, it, is, it is not, uh, I mean, a uh, motivation because uh, these issues already exist also before <laughs> this, uh, the, the last two years. So this is, I mean, my, my comment on, on that. Thank you, Mauro. Uh, Stefano, do, do you agree also with, um, with Mauro or let's say with all the other uh, point to view raised by the <laughs> others? Uh, no, no, I, I, I tend to agree. I, I want to be part of the group this time. <laughs> no, but, uh, but the problem is, why is this so? Um, so uh, it is harder to understand an ontology. Just admit that. It's, it's not easy to describe it. So when, uh, when, you, when you have something new to do, uh, it takes time to go to the literature and try to understand all the other ontologies are doing. And if they are simple, you actually get it. But they are too simple generally for what you want to do. And then you say, no, I need something deeper or uh, more details or whatever. If they are complicated, it's hard to read them. And so it's easier to say, I start the building mine because I have a clear idea of what I want. And this is uh, uh, also related to the fact that all the time you spend to understand the uh, uh, a good ontology or not publishing. And so people in academics say, no, it's better to build a new one than actually on a publication out of it. So it's, it's a problem not only of the ontologies themselves, but also of the system behind it. But this is just one or two factors in that. Uh, but I, I, I do agree that this uh, um, uh, standardization uh, organization can help. They don't really push much. And probably Sam is right. At, at the end, there is a voluntary 
work behind it. So they don't have the strength to enforce some way to, to, to work out of these standards. Um, still, uh, the connection with project and uh, standard, uh, standardization initiative is an important one. It's definitely very important. I, I would not have any suggestion how to improve this. Unfortunately. Thank you, Stefano. Um, in, in the meantime, I was also checking the, the chat, and I see that actually there is a, a quite intensive um, let's say discussion. And uh, I spotted now one comment uh, from Harm uh, that it is a little bit related to what we said before about the, the cross domain. And uh, he says there actually, I mean, the SDOs also, let's say, develop standards in a very efficient way. So then, also, for this reason, it is difficult to uh, extend it to, to other areas, even though, let's say, right now, the um, direction, let's say, that one, obviously, I mean, it is hard also, let's say, um, for this reason. Um, and then uh, I see there actually, there were also some other um, comments about the, uh, let's say, uh, inter interoperability about Damian. Uh, Damian, if actually you want to uh, also comment here, uh, we, you can actually also un unmute yourself and uh, you, you can also provide your, per your perspective. Um, because actually for today, I will have uh, also, let's say a very final question. Um, and that is um, also, let's say about some best practices that you can share uh, about, regarding the uh, interoperability or really support interoperability domain. I know that we have already discussed this, but if, for example, in, uh, in your opinion, also in a very utopistic way, you can think about something then um, it, it would be really nice to, to hear. And, and uh, by the way, Ruth also uh, posed a uh, question in the chat that is instead about the open ontology. Open ontologies uh, efforts that are, uh, let's say, currently being pushed in different domains, for example, like the open energy ontology uh, for the energy domain that is based on DF DFO. Uh, and then, I mean, sh she's really curious to know if uh, open source efforts may boost interoperability. So maybe if you can pick uh, both questions or maybe the, the, the one that you, you prefer, uh, feel free. I'm not sure who wants to start. Maybe. Mauro or Serm, that were, were never the first one to start the, 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 the round table. Sure. Uh, okay, but starting from the second one, from the one that was posted by, by Rute, uh, definitely yes. Um, the one of the other tasks in the, in the semantic web community is just to find the proper ontology for the proper use case. No? Sometimes there are a lot of uh, open available ontologies that uh, have been designed in a very precise uh, a complete way but for that for some reasons are never reused uh, in, uh, in in uh, in scenarios and that a lot, lot of people that uh, rebuild or, or uh, the, the redefine ontologies from scratch instead for example by simply uh, extending them so definitely uh, the 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 idea of the, of the open source uh, it's uh, uh, a good way for boosting interoperability, but the problems the problem always remain how to uh, promote each open source initiative across the possible different stakeholders of uh, each uh, each initiative. And then instead, the first question, I don't remember which was one. Uh, it, it was about actually best practices uh, that can be implemented, for example, in uh, um, to facilitate the. Um, cross-domain interoperability, even though it would be very utopistic and let's say not, 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 not applicable in a very short time. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree with this. I mean, it, uh, it is always, I mean, a, a very uh, uh, positive effort to try, to try to design some guidelines or some best practices uh, towards achieving a certain goal, but uh, uh, I mean, in my experience, uh, it is always very hard to try to find agreement about uh, using them and not, for example, to slightly modify or just taking inspiration about, I mean, from existing best practices, but in the end, in the end to adopt uh, our own, <laughs> basically. Thank you, Mauro. Um, not sure if uh, Serm Stefano, you would like to, to be the next one. 
um, I guess the question about the open source ontology is, um, I think of course, you know, open source is, is uh, better. It's just like if you develop a dictionary and then you keep it to yourself, uh, nobody's gonna be able to, uh, to know uh, about it and, and use it. Um, the important question is like, you know, you don't want also like too many open source ontology to keep popping up. Um, so um, you don't need to think about like how to, uh, you know, sustain uh, the ontology. I think um, somebody already uh, raised this issue, maybe or, um, you know, to, to um, have a strategy to uh, sustain the open source, has the strategy to um, uh, encourage uh, adoption of the, uh, the open source and, um, um, you know, we use the, uh, the other uh, open source ontology that kind of also <clears throat> go uh, toward that uh, best uh, practice uh, in terms of the, uh, the cost domain. Um, so um, going to, to the best practice, I mean, other specific things, you know, in, in, addition, in addition to like trying to uh, reuse uh, existing uh, you know, ontology or, or standard is um, to try to provide um, stand, uh, of standard, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the examples. Um, examples are very important uh, because, you know, sometimes we have to use like a um, pretty uh, dubious term in the ontology just to you know, make the, uh, the label uh, unique. So providing example, um, providing alternative uh, labels, um, you know, people tend to kind of look over the example, uh, which is very really important. So, and I'm not talking about just, you know, example annotation in the, uh, in the ontology. Um, you know, standard organization should um, looking into providing the um, example instance data, you know, how to um, use ontology, how to populate ontology, um, providing a good documentation on the, uh, the use case and scenario uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the ontology. Um, this would help uh, a lot with the people that are coming from different domain, you know, trying to uh, reuse your uh, ontology. Thank you, Sarman. Do, do you have also some, let's say, uh, utopistic ideas on how to uh, make the, let's say, cross interoperability, uh, not, not, not really utopistic, but let's say not achievable uh, in the short term ideas on how we can facilitate the um, cross domain interoperability? Well, I don't know. I mean, the answer would be kind of selfish, right? Just, you know, try to use my ontology. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning like you oh, well, use the IOF core and, you know, or I guess any other, um, you know, foundation and basic ontology that can, you know, um, kind of address at least part of your domain and extend it. Um, so, yeah. You know, just try to uh, um, hub and you know uh, do the hub and spoke. I mean, the other the other technique also is like um, perhaps don't um, over uh, standardize or over specify uh, your your uh, domain term also, in the sense that you know there are some terms that perhaps you you don't uh, need to uh, um, standardize um, actually, but you can define like, some. Um, um, uh, other primitives where um, other people can use those to um, define their terminology. And, you know, with the uh, um, computer and the reasoner, you can, you know, figure out, you know, whether this, these two terms are different or the same thing. Um, so, yeah, having good primitives might, might be another, um, another tips <laughs> yeah thank you sir uh, then uh, they, there are stefano and laura uh, if, if you want also to provide a perspective on the open source ontologies and the, the best practices okay stefano yes um, yeah of course uh, open source uh, is the best let's say no 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 need to defend the position uh, but still it depends on what you, we mean by open source so it is important that you can have an effect and change the ontology. And there, then we, we hit a difference because there are some ontologies that are there uh, in uh, order to develop a domain. And then you have an ontology that guides the analysis, you build up things. 
And then with practice, you see that uh, it doesn't fit very well because it makes some uh, commitments that are not uh, the best for the domain. So in that case, you have to be able to change that ontology. And there are the, the other ontologies, especially those that are more top level, where instead of those are philosophical ontologies, they say things are this way because I have a general view and uh, you either accept the way I am or you accept something else. Those are still open in a sense, but you cannot change them because you have to change <laughs> whoever <laughs> had that ontological view, the philosophical approach. And those are not really good for us uh, in applications because uh, they force you to change your way of thinking, which is naturally optimized for the domains in order to fit some general principle. Uh, sorry, what I, I, I should not be so strange. Let's say in general, they are not <laughs> the best for this case, um, unless you have a very long perspective and, and yeah, but we are doing applications or so talking in terms of applications, yes, we don't, it's a luxury to say, well, maybe in 50 years, that will be better. <laughs> I need to run my system now or the most in five years, because after that, I'm just losing money. So that, that's the problem. It's not enough to be open. You have to be able also to change out of uh, concrete cases that uh, you want to cover with your, uh, uh, with your ontology. So that, that's, uh, that, that, that would be the point. And the, the rest of it, in terms of best practices, I am really disappointed that we don't really have me. We have a lot of uh, scattered examples of things that move, uh, patterns that they, uh, arise. Uh, but, but this is maybe some, uh, something I would suggest people to do. I, I do when I teach ontology, I say, okay, let's build one. And then uh, we qualify where it does not apply. So we give examples of where it fails. Because perhaps the best thing is to say, look, uh, use it, but not in those cases. And they are very hard to find. Sometimes because it captures the way you think and you don't move it away and challenge yourself so that uh, you cover the fact that other people have other perspectives. So you cannot alert them that your ontology would not fit uh, with that different perspective. Uh, uh, but no, I don't. I don't really can say much about in terms of uh, best practices today. Yeah, what, what you said is actually very interesting. I mean, to think in the other way around, and not I mean like to it's start hard. working on something. And yeah, it is. It, it is actually a uh, an, an interesting, let's say, point of view of uh, when you. you uh, work uh, with ontologies and you, you let's say <laughs> develop new ones thank you stefano also for sharing this perspective uh, now i will pass the floor to laura um if you want to to comment on these points thanks rita and uh, well that a lot of uh, very 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 useful uh, things have been already said so what well, open open source yes <laughs> absolutely but also open source community behind because indeed uh, open but then you need to be able i mean i, I totally uh, support what stefano said so people also need to be able to to do something with them to contribute somehow and it's not that everybody contributes and changes everything so you need some 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 governance something behind that's why you you, you need to think about it a little bit before but that brings me to another point which is there is a lot out there and I know very well that it's difficult to reuse something for several reasons. Sometimes you don't even have the time or it's difficult, you don't have the experts it, it's, and, and they are too complex or maybe they're not and it's not exactly what you wanted. So this, 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 is, this is normal, but if we focus, okay, it's not ideal. If I had to do it myself, I would have done it differently because this, this or that, but there is one that it's good enough and we can also change it a bit, contribute, add things to that. So if this becomes clear, people feel more engaged. So if let's keep still a variety of things because it's important and because the scope is not exactly always the same. Make explicit what the scope is and then people can, can understand better if that it's suitable for, for, for them or not. And let's make them part of the process. So if then we have a number still kind of a limited, we, we need some consensus and we think let's focus our efforts on those, then things become easier because uh, again, 
example of Saref, it's it's far from perfect. And uh, even in the project Interconnect, I have still so many partners complaining why this is this, why this is that. Well, at the end of the day, everybody was able with the support to map their things of Saref and to add things on top of Saref. So we, we, we kept at Saref plus the other ontologies that we'll use because it's not only Saref. So, yeah, we, we added things to the OM ontology for unit of measures because there were not the unit of measures need, needed and necessary for, for energy and so forth. Okay, but let's reuse at least what's good enough. If we focus, if we converge on something, that's, that's at least the best practice. And I know it's not ideal because I know it's easier to, <laughs> to do your own. But then it's not going to help anybody if we always do our own. So if we can try at least to converge of, of, of some uh, open, then uh, maybe we will uh, we will we will get a little bit more uh, uh, results. Thank you, Laura. Um, I would like actually to uh, also let one of our attendees uh, to uh, let's say be uh, on the floor now because actually Damian was also making some uh, comments about the data interoperability, which I believe would be nice that everyone will hear. Uh, Damian, actually, you can now unmute yourself, and if you would like to make any comments, feel free. Yeah, sure. Thanks, and um, I really. I really appreciate all the discussion here. Um, yeah, this whole, I, I like to use the word Esperanto that uh, was created in Europe and uh, as a metaphor for what we're after here in data science, which is a, uh, ultimately, you know, this system where we can take knowledge graph and one, from one discipline and knowledge graph from another and throw them together and query them without having to map anything. So um, to get there, though, uh, we can't go the wiki data route, which has over 9,000 relationships right now. Uh, we, need, we need a reduced instruction set. We need a small number of relations so that we can comprehend this stuff and learn, learn it fairly quickly. Uh, to do that, it means, I think, you know, this may be far away, but we need to be able to take models that use relations that are semantically opaque. And by that, I mean like object properties and data properties that are have words in them like has age um, and unpeel the semantics so that uh, we know that we've hit rock bottom in terms of semantics. And so by that, I mean, what is an age? Just as a really 20 second example, what is an age? It's actually a duration between when something started or was created and when it was measured. Right now, that's usually hidden away in object properties or data property um, usage. And we need to expose that. What kind of uh, thing was measured for its age? When was it created? Um, whether it was age of conception, age of birth of an organism or a tree, how is it measured, tree rings? All of that semantics actually has to be unpeeled from all of these relations that we're using right now in our ontologies that are making them uninteroperable uh, and that's that was my main thing thank you damian uh, i believe that someone wanted to make a comment or <laughs> it's, uh, i'm just gonna have joking here but um you know oh okay you know, sorry Sam, please you know there's a different age calculation in the in the west and in the east right <laughs> whether you call the time in in the in the, in the warm, warm or not so um so, so definitely you have to define the age, um, you know, with, uh, um, with other primitives that allow people to, uh, to describe the way they calculate the age uh, differently. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And so by unpacking has age that one ontology might use and being enabling it to map over to another ontology that's really specializing in understanding that age is a duration between two points being measured about something, that's the way we can start to approach an Esperanto or a, a, a finally a mapping onto a universal model of semantics. May I add, uh, ask uh, uh, Damien a question here? Because the example of Esperanto is a good one, it's always inspiring, but Esperanto didn't actually work. Uh, so why would you assume that in this case, uh, besides being something to 
that we would all would like to achieve. In this case, it would actually work. Okay, so I didn't catch what you what the historical uh, reference was to how Esperanto came to be, um, but I guess what I'm after is, I think we some of us have given up on the idea that there is some kind of universal language um, in data science, but I really believe we're trying to iterate towards that and. If you take a look at how we use language to describe the world, whether we've chosen English for this conference <laughs> or some other language, um, it is our common use and understanding of the words to describe information and everything we see in the world. Well, this is what we're trying to do about data. So we are actually trying to find one language and the history of any particular language is an evolution and uh, in bringing in and casting away of words. This is what we're trying to do with our sentence structure. And I love owl ontologies because they're allowing us to spell out the classes, mostly of um, classes of nouns in the world, but also of processes and qualities of things and to create sentences out of the allowed uh, relations and the subjects and objects and the properties, which are like the, the uh, nouns and the verbs and the adjectives and adverbs of our language. So I see the mapping that way. So it was a very interesting contribution. I mean, because, um, also in, in, in the way in which you uh, explain it, let's say also uh, in the second part, you made it also more clear. And it really um, let us understand uh, that it is very important also to find a common language, not only when we speak, but also when we work with data. So it, and it, it is actually still a work in progress here. Um, as we are also approaching uh, the end of uh, our uh, workshop, uh, I, I know that actually uh, there, um, in the meantime, people were also uh, exchanging some comments in the chat, which is really great because actually we, we were also obviously uh, read all your contributions uh, and we also really like that there was a very high uh, interactive session um, also something that i noticed in the meantime is that you were continuing to um, include some inputs in the slido uh, and a comment that actually was raised is that very often we work in silos and so collaboration uh, is a very key word also to overcome uh, inter challenges that uh, we currently face, for example, in the semantic interoperability area. So with, with this word actually, so uh, really highlighting also the importance of uh, collaborating with different initiatives, which is also one of the main goals of both Onto Commons and EU uh, IoT. Uh, I would like also to conclude this panel discussion and uh, I will actually pass the floor back to Rute, uh, who will instead uh, will say a final few words to everyone. Thank you. Okay, so first of all, thank you to all and also to the to the audience. So it's just not to take uh, a long, long time, but basically just to explain. So first of all, we have been collecting all your information and we are developing, uh, so in the next days we will develop a small report, which we will pass to all of you. So speakers and audience, red, registered participants about the key aspects that were discussed here today. And uh, uh, then what we also expect, so UIoT and Noto Commons to develop is a, a white paper, okay, so written by, we'll now work on this on, on the next uh, weeks, uh, with focus on interoperability and on the role of ontologies in this context, cross-domain, so manufacturing that is called cross-domain. And uh, so we will get back to some of you, okay, asking if you want to participate, and then of course, there will be uh, also the possibility for the audience to participate if there is interest. So we thank you all, at least on my behalf, I and also from UIOT. I hope you enjoyed the event. Uh, I don't know if Eddie wants also to... to yeah, thank you, Rote. Yeah, I mean, let me also join you to thank all the speakers, panelists uh, for their insightful input. And also, uh, uh, let's say, add also uh, some summaries about what uh, discussed. So I think that ontologies and standards um, have a very common things, which are agreement and acceptance and use by the community. And I also believe that uh, ontologies and standards have to be fair. Uh, fair uh, principles should be uh, uh, pushed 
and uh, to find ontologies, to make them accessible. I mean, it's the same for standards also, to make them interoperable and to push for, uh, for reuse. And I think this is also a, a very big point that all speakers highlighted on this reuse aspect. And this is part of, of Onto Commons ecosystem. Uh, in which we, we, we believe that uh, harmonizing ontologies is, is, is very important in intra-domain and cross-domain and to make all those harmonization available for the community and to collaborate with uh, standardization uh, um, organization in order to, to standardize ontologies and also to, to standardize, uh, uh, to ontologize standards. Uh, so to, to conclude also, I will invite you to keep in touch through Ontop Commons website and to register as expert to be in touch with the community. Uh, also, we'll invite you to reach the next formal ontologies meet and industry workshop next September that we host in Tarbes in the southwest of France. So we'll be happy to welcome you. Uh, it will be in person. Uh, and also uh, invite you to submit your ontologies related to industry uh, on industryportal.space. So thank you very much and uh, let's keep in touch.